sewer charges that are listed here that, well, we have um, a number of sewer lien charges that date back over 2003 and 2004. Are those amounts listed the original amounts of the sewer charges or do those include accrued interest over the course of time from the original due dates? Yes, the information on the listing that I gave you for the payment that came up to the 3487.37, the uh, principal interest and fees are included in all of those. And do you know how you'd break out the original principal sewer charge? Yeah, I have them. One, the uh, one that was filed June 6, 2003, the principal is 303. The lien recorded on December 5, 2003, the principal amount 295. The lien recorded June 4, 2004, the principal amount 238. And okay, well, I, I, I just wanted to get a sense of okay, what, sorry, what yes. portion of this was sort of principal and how much was interest. So there is a there is a sizable financial penalty being paid in the accrual of interest yes. and charges. Councilor Mole. Well, along the lines of what Councilor Roberts was asking, um, I'm assuming, I, and I hope I'm wrong, that there was no look into if this was a hardship on, the, on those particular residents, why this situation occurred. And I'm wondering if we need to possibly move this or delay this item while we look and see if there was a, a hardship that we may want to mitigate part of it or you know, maybe the town manager can help with that. Mr. Yeah. McGovern. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to point out that you know, this foreclosed on December 6, 2004. It's not something that, you know, has been, uh, you know, long time in foreclosure. It's, you know, it, it's fairly standard that, uh, you know, this seems to happen once or twice a year that we, we do send all the different notices, but occasionally for, you know, reasons that we don't know and that, and we don't usually ask, you know, people are, for whatever reason are unable to, to, to pay the bill. Uh, you know, I, I would hope that, you know, since this was immediately acted upon, uh, you know, within, uh, you know, less than a month of the time that uh, the mortgage company has already paid it uh, and, you know, has already taken the action that they wanted to that uh, the council, uh, you know, would approve this and allow the property to, to uh, return into the uh, tax paying uh, ability so that uh, it's no longer technically owned by the town. We no longer uh, have to uh, carry insurance on it. Council Mould. Uh, again, my question still stands to the council as a whole, not knowing anything, not, wa not wanting to embarrass anyone, but does anyone have any information or does anyone want to consider delaying this in order to gain that information, whether this is a hardship issue or not? Councilor Lynch. Well, I'll answer the question. I don't want any further information. I'm satisfied that the, the lien has been discharged and uh, I think it's appropriate to um, return it back to uh, what was the previous owner. Um, the reasons I think are irrelevant. Uh, I'm satisfied that they've acted promptly now and let's have a heart. And <laughs> Thank you. Council If I just might mention for the uh, citizens at home that might be watching tonight, I would hope that if anyone found themselves in this position that they would come to the town manager and explain if they have a particular hardship and at least bring it to the town's attention um, I know that would be a very rare occurrence, but, uh, you know, I, I don't want the viewing public to think that we routinely foreclose on people without trying to find out what, what's going on behind the, the situation. All of the lien notices and foreclosure notices, all the foreclosure notices that, and the, that uh, Ms. Lane prepares do indicate on there of the opportunity to approach the town uh, for hardship abatement under that particular statute. So that is fully disclosed and, and uh, on all of the notices that's required. Councilor Roberts. I believe the town manager answered my question that I had and I would move the question. Okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you, Miss Wayne. <clears throat> Item number 94 has to do with rescue fees. Anything the manager would like to say to introduce this? Yeah, uh, once a year or so, uh, Medicare looks at all the reimbursement rates that they allow uh, for uh, various medical activities, hospital fees. One of the areas they look at is uh, for rescue fees as well. And we have uh, fees for basic life support, advanced life support one rates, and advanced life support two rates. If, if we don't raise our fees to agree with the Medicare, we're with, with then not receiving reimbursements uh, from the federal government going dedicated to the rescue unit that we would otherwise receive. So by, by paralleling the allowed Medicare reimbursement rates, we're not leaving any, any money on, sort of, so to speak, on the table uh, with the federal government. Do I hear a motion? Move for passage of the uh, new rates as proposed. Is there a second? A second. Then moved and seconded. Any discussion? Council Fritz. I, I was just not clear whether these rates compared to what Medicare is reimbursing, then it talks about 40%, they're reducing their fees 40% and also comparing insurance rates. And I'm not sure where this recommended fee comes in. What it is is they're going through a process of trying to simplify their rates. And they used to have all sorts of miscellaneous fees for all sorts of little extras. And instead, they're trying to move to one base fee for the level of service and not get into count how many aspirins that were used and, and uh, you know, needles used and all that sort of thing. And they're trying to simplify their rates and uh, moving to one cleaner structure. So that's what that reference is. Thank you. Any other questions? Council Mole. Chief, you came before us last year and dramatically increased these rates for the same reason. And we had a lengthy discussion that night about how the numbers lined out. Uh, from this, I can see that they have decreased what they're willing to pay for things such as uh, oxygen, IVs, etc., but increased the base rate. In your billing scheme, when you have to pick up a person in distress, have you likewise decreased what you were charging for oxygen, et cetera, to match the, the new Medicare reimbursements, or have you left those fees up there and are also asking to increase these base fees? As Medicare knocks those off, we knock those off. It, it, we have a billing company that does this, and the billing company does it for, I don't know, for maybe a hundred other uh, ambulance services, and they recommend across the board to us what Medicare will accept, what they won't accept. And, and we principally, we go right along with that recommendation and we pass it on to you. But um, any of the fees <coughs> that they will not pay anymore, we've knocked off. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief McGoohy. Um, any other comments or questions? Then all in favor of the new fees? It's unanimous. Thank you. No. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, now we move to item number 95, which has to do with a memorial marker uh, commemorating the USS Eagle, which was sunk off of Portland Headlight in 1945 by. The German U boat. Um, do I hear a motion? Move for approval of item 95 uh, to put a memorial marker at Port Williams Park as requested. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? One. Councilor Beck. I was fascinated by this as I read through it. It was not something that I was aware of at all as a matter of main history. But I did note one thing as I read through the references to the accident and no accident. 
an intentional attack. Um, the uh, plaque as proposed, I see references that the, uh, that the ship was sunk approximately nine miles southeast of Fort William, the location where the plaque will be, will be installed. I note that the, they have a copy of the old proposed plaque that says that the sinking took place approximately 12 miles southeast of the location. And I note that the cover letter to, to uh, our town manager says that it, uh, the attack took place and the ship was sunk four miles. And I just wonder if before the plaque <laughs> is erected, if um, we could ask for some historical clarification as to whether it was four miles, nine miles, or 12 miles from Fort Wayne. Councillor Backer, I would expect no less a question from you. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. McGovern or yeah. Mike. Uh, Mr. Backer, uh, Councillor Backer, I, the Germans had more precision, precision than, the, than the author of the letter. Uh, uh, Bob Malley will, will check that out. With us. Well, my sense was just that if we waited for another letter, it might have just been a few hundred yards on <laughs> Fort Wayne. Okay. Any other comments or questions? No. I was just going to add it's the new GPS system we have, but <laughs> no, no, no. It's getting better. Okay. I think we'll move to uh, Councilor Fritz. You look. I'm, I'm assuming that this marker would be like within the fence area, right by the headlights. Is there a specific place? No. We we're extending the cliff walk out uh, towards the Delano Parkway. Uh, I don't see Bob. Uh, where is he? Mally? You hear a minute ago. <laughs> okay. He's plowing, probably. Plowing, yeah. Uh, and the plan is to incorporate, I was looking for a nod of agreement because I think this is the case. The plan is to, to incorporate that into one of the, these little circular areas, lookout areas that we plan to have within that area. It's one of those things you, you, you move along a pathway and then it widens out to a lookout area and it's, it's, it's good looking to incorporate it into one of those lookout areas of that thing that the, that project that's been funded with the Museum of Portland would like Okay, great. Um, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we are at the point where we said we we moved to table item number 91 until this point, so could I ask for a motion to remove 91 from the table? Moves that uh, remove item 91-0405 from the table for further consideration. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, is, is there discussion allowed on, a, on an untabling? I know there's no discussion on right. tabling. To be honest with you, I, I think you tabled at this point, you arrived at this point. I, I, I could be corrected, but I don't think it's necessary for you to vote to take it off the table, but you in essence rearranged the agenda at this point, so I think you're there automatically. I don't okay. think you need a vote to take it off the table. Okay, then, then we're at item number 91. <laughs> I just had a quick question. Did, did we want to go into a finance committee meeting before we talk to, about this? I'm going to um, get there. Um, but thank you for reminding me. Um, I would like to suggest item number 91, uh, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, has to do with the disposition of funds from the sale of the lot that way next to Town Hall, which just happened a few weeks ago in December. Um, so this is the first council meeting since that sale took place, so we're now considering what to do with those funds. I would like to suggest that since this is a fiscal 05 funding issue, um, which is discrete from the upcoming fiscal 06 budgetary considerations, and also to allow our new counselor of one hour um, a chance to have the benefit of uh, a little, who has not had the benefit of a little of our previous finance committee discussions, or the, the previous finance committee, it's not exactly the same group, um, I would like to suggest that we recess brief, briefly as a town council and meet as the finance committee with our uh, finance chair, David Backer, running that meeting. This finance committee meeting is open to the public. 
um, and anyone's invited to attend who wants to do it. My um, expectation is that uh, we will leave the cameras running. My expectation is that even I, we were thinking of going out back. I will defer to Councillor Backer as to whether I don't know how big the crowd was. But we want to make it clear that this is not a council discu discussion as, as a, the council as a decision making body. This is a finance committee discussion. Um, but once the finance committee discussion is over, we will reconvene as the council, the decision making authority. Um, here, a report from Councillor Backer, the finance chair, on what consensus if any, has been arrived at during the Finance Committee meeting, and um, then proceed with item number 91 and any decisions we might make. Um, and then finally, just for those of you who have looked ahead, um, there is a last page on the agenda, which is an executive session, um, and we would then, after all that, after this item is over, go to executive session. That has to do with collective bargaining and that sort of thing, and that would not be on camera. That would be out back um, in the... Uh, Room out back. Councilor Roberts. Considering the number of folks that are here, I would suggest we not go out back because they would not have room to sit in and see what's going on particularly well. Um, this is, I don't like this format particularly, but I think we need to. Are there any other thoughts on that? Councilor Beck? Oh, I agree. Um, I, I, with everyone who's here, this is being the only thing left on the agenda. I have to assume that everybody is here for this item. Um, and although it might be more comfortable, comfortable for us to sit around a table to be able to look at each other, it would be impossible for us to get everybody in there um, to listen. And we might as well do it here. Um, everybody's seated in place. Okay. Let's do it. Then uh, I would like there a to, motion? I would like to formally motion that we recess the town council meeting and uh, begin a finance committee meeting. Yeah, I'm not sure we need a formal motion, but do we need a formal motion? Then do we? Then we need a second. A second. All in favor of recessing and, and going into finance committee meeting? In this location. Okay. Then council. It was unanimous. Um, then Councillor Backer and I will just swap seats because we will be running the finance committee. Does it go with your outfit? <laughs> I was hoping you would trade. We're oh, going to have to yeah. dim the lights down here. It's going to be a little bright <laughs> over on this end of the day. Up there. Yeah. Well, with that, the town council sitting as the finance committee um, is now in session. And this is a matter of process. I'm not beholden to how we should approach this. Um, in looking at the list of items that we have available for us, and just by way of background, what we have um, in front of us is a proposal for what to do with the $233,000 of net proceeds from the sale of the lot next door. The requests or the proposals for how to allocate these funds seems to me can be divided up into a few different categories, at least conceptually. Um, we had um, the council, and correct me, Councilor Swift Kayata, if I'm going to misstate this, that it was the council that had committed $75,000 of the proceeds to debt reduction, or was it the finance committee? That was the council. That was the 
council it was because it was in, I'm sorry, that was the council because it was part of the budget. So we would be just confirming that that was included in the 05 budget. Yeah, and that was my question, is whether we had already committed it or whether it was simply a recommendation from the Finance Committee. But it sounds like that's already been committed and we need to merely confirm. Um, that was the $9,000 for the regular expenses that's included in the final row. I'm not sure that that was confirmed. So we have as one item $75,000 that the council previously committed to be used for debt reduction. We have $9,000 in legal appraisal and other expenses related to the sale that it seems should be properly um, addressed first before any other monies um, are used. And then we have another hundred and $49,000 of proposed use for the remaining funds. Um, before we get to the remaining $149,000, um, is the Finance Committee comfortable with, the, with approving the commitment of $75,000 for property tax relief as a first item? Do we have a Do you want consensus on that, or is there anybody, I, I guess I should ask if there's anybody um, on the Finance Committee um, who would not um, approve the commitment of $75,000 to property tax relief as the first item of use for the net sale proceeds. So it sounds like as a matter of process, we're okay with that. Um, the next item would be, is there anybody on the council who, as a matter of, I guess, process, would um, oppose using $9,000 of the net proceeds to pay the legal appraisal and other expenses related to the sale? Okay. We've got a consensus on that. That's easy. Okay, so we have $84,000 committed, at least to recommend to the council for payment. Now we get into the more interesting part of the discussion. David, was that the one on the last time of the year that said already spent? So perhaps we ought to just <laughs> include that one if we wanted to get off the table quickly as well. Um, what are you referring to? Public information. The $6,000 item. So halfway down. I, have a, I guess I have a question on that. If the sale had not gone through and we'd spent that money, where would it have come from? I think that's a question that should be directed to the town manager. <laughs> I was just waiting for the chair to uh, I was waiting for him to direct it. And <laughs> I was <laughs> well, wait no longer. Okay. <laughs> Right now, it, it's, an, it's an unfunded budget expenditure that the public information account, uh, account 530-2004, is overspent. Uh, that those monies were used to, uh, all the voters in Cape Elizabeth received a voter information thing before the polls that helped to result in 3,500 absentee voters when we informed everyone of how to, how to vote early. And it also uh, was primarily uh, devoted to it providing information on uh, the vote, the ratification of previous debt. But that money's been spent. If uh, you don't appropriate it, it, at the end of the year, you would have to appropriate monies to account 530 uh, in order to fund the debt. So you need to do it before June 30. But many items, many different lines, some lines get overspent, some get underspent. Mm -hmm. And we deal with those, as you point out, Michael, at the end of the year. I don't think we necessarily need to take the proceeds from the sale of a capital asset to refund one particular budget line that's been overspent halfway through our fiscal year. We can wait and see what we have underspent in other budget lines going forward. And it just strikes me as a very bad use of the funds of a capital asset. So I, I don't 
Jack take it as a given just because one budget line is overspent that we need to fill that particular line at this point? I just, you know, don't know why we would not fund a known town deficit and instead give money to an independent charitable organization. You know, I, I find that offensive to the taxpayers of Cape Elizabeth that we would not fund a known town deficit and instead give the money away. Well, I think we ought to fund our own deficits first before we give charitable contributions. I guess I can give my speech now or I can give my speech later on why we should um, fund it. Um, and I guess I've got to figure out maybe now is better, but um, I thought we were just going through line by line. Now, if you want to compare each line to whether or not the land trust can get money, then maybe, and I would ask David to let's just bring up the land trust item first, and we can discuss that first and see what's left, rather than discuss everything else first and see what's left in a land trust. Because the fact of the matter is the Finance Committee did vote last year, 43, to fund a partial request, only a partial request, 70000 not the 100000 that was requested. So I'll discuss all of that when we get to that. But I think as a process, if every single thing is going to be compared to the land trust request, let's just bring up the land trust request first and decide on it. And then we'll see how much money is left over for everything else. Councilor Swift Kayata. I'd like to, um, just as a process thing, I'd like to hear about the merits, not necessarily the relative merits, but I'd like to sort of hear about the merits of each one of these items first, because I want to make sure I understand what each one of these items are. Some, some do involve things to do with capital expenses, uh, not, not that one, but I just want to make sure I know, I'm not sure I have a, a firm grasp on the library thing versus the, you know, the, uh, the rental unit repairs and so on and so forth. So I'd like to hear about them all the way we usually do in the finance, the way the process that I've seen in the past five years has worked with finance committee is we sort of hear about the merits of everything and then at the end the divvying happens after you've had a chance to hear the pros and cons of each thing. I'd just like to and actually what 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 I would like to, to hear and I gave the town manager a little warning before the meeting that I'd be requesting this but I would appreciate him giving us not only um, his summary of what each of these items are uh, but also his own ranking of priority for the expenditure of these line items uh, taking for a moment the issue of a donation to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust out. The remaining items that total $109,000, if you could uh, explain to us what each of those are with a ranking. Why don't I, thanks David, why don't I, I try to speak of them in terms of my priority, maybe in groupings as opposed to, you know, the, the narrow one, two, three. Uh, and then, you know, if you force me to get to the specifics, you know, I'd be happy to do it. But uh, uh, you know, my first priorities are, you know, obviously, as you can tell from my previous comment, is if we already know we have a deficit, we've already spent the money, I, I think we ought to fund it. Uh, secondly, uh, my priority is the, uh, the issue of the rental units at Fort Williams Park building right here. The town owns a couple of different buildings at Fort Williams. Uh, two buildings, uh, one building houses family crisis shelter and another one houses the, the day one offices. Uh, we knew we had some problems with those buildings, and we, we brought in a, a structural engineer, a building survey person, actually about a year and a half ago now, and we had estimates come back of code issues involving code violations, of uh, rock of deterioration, of structural problems with, with uh, porches, of uh, roof issues, you name it. Uh, I, I think all together it added up to about $250,000. Uh, because of Pulaski, because of, uh, uh, you know, the, the budget cap that, that the council was put on, that, you know, despite the fact we had code violations, we just weren't able to address all those things. Uh, we recently, uh, Ernie went out, uh, uh, the facilities manager, and got bids 
uh, for work that had been included in the budget. You included $50,000 in the, the budget this year for some improvements to the day one building. This, this, is, this is directly related to a code issue. Uh, the, the third floor, the top floor of the building is occupied with only one means of egress. That's a violation of the fire code, it's a violation of the building code. Uh, the Common sense code. Yeah, the, all of those things. Uh, we, we, we had it all engineered with, you know, we, we paid for that engineering money. Uh, so that took 10000 to 50000 uh, it, It's really difficult, as you know, to get contractors these days. Ernie finally cajoled a couple of bids out of different contractors. Uh, the bids had a significant variance. Uh, the bid that, that we want to go with uh, was about $75,000. Uh, it, uh, you know, more than we have, I sent Ernie back to the drawing board. We looked at many different changes of, you know, to see is there another way we could do this. Uh, there was another way we, we looked at, but after you looked at all the different changes that had to result, the cost difference was like $1,000. Uh, there's 18,700 and, uh, excuse me, $18,476 in a dormant account called the Fort Williams Park Fund. This is not the Fort Williams Capital Fund, this is the Fort Williams Park Fund. What we want to be able to do is, is award this bid and get this code violation fixed. We, the contractor who's the low bidder is Langford and Lowe. Uh, one reason they were willing to do it with us is they're finishing up the, the uh, kindergarten project. So, so they're ready to mobilize. They're already in town. Uh, the foreman and other personnel are ones that Ernie's working very closely with in the school project. And you know they've just done a terrific job on that in kindergarten. I mean, the, the timing is important. Uh, they're, they're here in town now, and we'd, we'd like to get started on this to, to meet that code violation. Uh, so that, that would balance it out so that we could, we could get the funds in order to complete that project and uh, you know, work, with a, uh, work with a bidder. Uh, the next uh, is still actually within that same top grouping is the door work at the Cape Cottage Fire Station, $12,000. For anyone familiar with the Cape Cottage Fire Station, that's the one next to the cookie jar. There's two garage doors. There's a fire truck in each garage door. Well, as you look at the building, on the door on the left, there's a, there's a fire truck that we wrote out a check for last month, uh, in November actually, for 300000 almost exactly $300,000, I think it was. Uh, we knew the truck was going to be tight. Uh, the, the good volunteers of uh, Engine One Company who, who are here this evening, have already had to do carpentry work in the back of the station in order to fit the back of the truck over where the, the steps are down. And they've worked it so that you can't, as you're in that station, it's so tight. You can't get around the back of the truck when the truck's parked there, but at least now the truck can get fully in so the, the garage door can close down. But they've made that much progress with, with their volunteer work doing that. The difficulty is, though, the width of the truck, the mirrors, the lights, and everything on it, there is an inch and a half two-inch clearance on either side of the fire truck as you go up. You know, we're, we're talking about Paul personnel, but some of the professional firefighters in other towns, cities, and they're trying to back that truck in and out of this station with all the traffic going back on Shore Road. And, you know, I couldn't even back my car into this two-inch station. And we're asking them to do it with a $300,000 fire truck. Uh, already, you know, it's the truck has already been, or some lights on the truck have already been scratched and damaged on two different instances in, in a little over a month. Uh, you know, the, the town's made a big investment in that truck. I see this as, as something that really ought to be done. What would happen is, and again, uh, you know, this is, we're going to use a used piece of steel that we took out of the old public safety station in order to save money, we're recycling. And we're also going to be using some uh, public works help, and the fire companies agreed to help out as well. Uh, and what, what we're doing is going to put the beam across the whole front, take out the, the, the middle area, and have one door that, that goes all the way across. And uh, the fire chief's got estimates for the door uh, itself, and then obviously there's all the other work related. That would cost 12000 to do, and what it would enable us to do is to more safely. The other difficulty with the truck, you know, it's not only backing it in and out, but if they begin to turn ever so slightly before the truck is fully out of the station, that's where they've had the problem. If it's not all the way out of the station, 
and they turned that truck ever so slightly, and there's also an incline there on the, on the uh, as, a, as you go in, the, the apron is not quite flat. And just that little change, you know, with the truck, you get a big truck that size and it moves ever so slightly, the next thing, it, it's into the wall. So that's, that's what that is for. Well, keep can, going. Can I ask right Michael's up. question, though? Just not to interrupt, mm. but just so I am really clear, Michael, are you going over these in your order of priority? That's what the chairman asked so, me to do. And I just wanted to make sure I'm clarifying it in my mind so that um, your first priority is the voter mailing and then the rental units and then the fire truck. No. I, I, okay. No. These, that's why I asked questions. That's I'm glad you confused. did. These first three are in one grouping. So these are my top tier. The, the first three. That's the end of the top tier. These are my three most important. So you're not able to, within that group, prioritize them? I think as I explained them, one is the code violation, one is the $300,000 fire truck, and the third is the money's already been spent. Okay. I have difficulty prioritizing three things that in my mind... Okay. I am uh, trying to get it clear really in my to mind, too. Yep. Uh, yeah, I can't prioritize amongst those three. Any other questions on the three that our manager has covered? The the next thing on my list would be library, painting, and building repair. Uh, I know the uh, council got an email from the the uh, from the secretary. What do you want, secretary? Oh, okay. Uh, I got an email from the trustees pointing out all sorts of different issues with with rot, with paint falling off, and you know anyone that goes into the library can see the condition of that. This is, there are, there's a whole long list of things that need to be done in the, in the library. We have not prioritized all of those things. It's to address all of the lists so that we, we try to improve. But that would be my next piece would be a whole bunch of miscellaneous improvements to take care of the rot and to uh, do some painting and uh, you know, work, really working with Ernie, working with Jay, the librarian, and working with the trustees to see what their priorities are. Uh, the next item would be the temperature humidity control unit for historic records. Uh, back about 20 years ago, the town decided uh, to take all its historic records and try to take better care of them. There was a citizen committee that looked at that. And at that point, you know, you remember after the newspaper, they were down, and a lot of them were down in the furnace room downstairs here with the, you can feel the heat in this room tonight, but it was directly across from the furnace and, and they just baked. And then during the summer, they, they uh, got all damp. If you, this is the typical basement in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, Connie Murray, who was head of the, the historic preservation, Roger Ray, and a whole bunch of other citizens said, this, this is unacceptable. So they decided to put it into a, uh, a room over at the library as the, the library was being renovated, I think in 82 maybe? It finished in 86, fin finished in 86. So anyway, uh, they bought this temperature humidity control unit, which is, which is this big piece of machinery that, that's down in that room that uh, keeps it, the humidity level even, you know, in this basement area to preserve the record. About two years ago, maybe, the thing started leaking, started working inefficiently, and then eventually it, it's now just, it's a, it's a big closet filled with mechanical equipment that doesn't work. You know, it, it just takes space. The, the, the unit is not functioning during the uh, summertime. The, uh, the records are all damp. And, you know, some of these records, you know, date back to, uh, a few of them date back to the old books of, uh, you know, the beginning of the history of the community. And then a lot of them date back from the separation of South Portland, all of the old treasurer's records, the, the old assessing records, all of those, those are there. Any question on that? I do have a question. Is this the same um, project that um, you had requested last um, spring when we were doing the 05 budget that we decided was not enough of a priority to fund in 05? Or is there something different? Yeah, I, I think that's safe to look at. Originally, for fiscal year 2005, the, and I'm looking at the capital improvement program prepared in 2003. The projected capital improvement needs for the current fiscal year were one million thirty-five thousand dollars. You know, it's been necessary to defer m more than half of the capital improvement 
that were projected for this year because the regional waste fee went up, because of all these, these other things happened. It's, it's my belief, again, that we ought to be taking care of our historic records before we're giving money away to another organization. And that's why, even though you did defer it, I think it's important to bring it forward at this time in the context of the proceeds of this fund. It's not an issue that's going to go away. The governor and the legislature are putting in a new spending cap. It's going to be difficult to get this money. All of the CIP projections show that the town should be spending a million dollars a year on capital improvements, on taking care of our roads, on replacing our equipment, and on maintaining our buildings. Uh, because of all the cuts, we're only spending now 500000 We're spending less than we were last year. Last year, we spent less than we were the year before. I have long list of things that have been put off. This particular thing, I don't think should be put off any longer. Uh, you know, every summer you go through that the, the record, you know, goes through that dampness cycle off and on. Uh, you know, they could be lost. I don't think they're in immediate danger of being lost. But yes, it was deferred. But in the context of possibly having some funds available and determining prioritization for those, in my view, this is a higher priority than increasing an amount that I recommended for the, the, the issue that is really most people here for. A lot of people here for. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to mention that the way you had asked the town manager that might have made it appear that he was picking and choosing what we prioritized and didn't last year when it was a decision of the whole finance committee and, and, and I did as, not mean yeah. to imply okay. that but I, I do want to make sure the record is very clear that at least one maybe more of these items were items that we decided when we were looking also at the land trust request among other things were items that were just not as high a priority and so I'm struggling to find out what's changed since then David I think there were a number of items that we had in our budget last year that I know the uh, libra uh, librarian is here and the other departments. They run their hands over these items that they felt that they were absolutely necessary. And it wasn't a matter of that they didn't meet the level of uh, <coughs> desire. It was a matter that the council put on a cap and said, we're not spending more than this number of dollars on these items this year. Those things got left off. And that's why I didn't vote for the budget, because these things got left off. These are items that we must, at some point, pay for. And from what I see happening in Augusta, this is clearly just the tip of the iceberg as far as the town having difficulties. It's going to get worse every single year. Pileski may not have won the actual vote, but she won. And we're going to find out for the next decade that she did. And we get money, we need to cover some of these things because we're not going to get it again. Well, and, and Council Roberts, your point is well taken. All of these items, at least all of the items that we had considered during the last budget process um, that we said no to, we didn't say no to them because we didn't see any merit in them. We said no to them because we drew a line at some point that we simply were not going to require that the taxpayers dig deeper than we were already asking them to dig to fund the budget that we did approve. Um, Councillor Fritz and then Councillor Knowles. I just, um, in, in my recollection of our discussions in the budget on this particular um, humidity control unit uh, for the historic records, I remember being very concerned about that and being surprised that I, as I remember, the trustees did not recommend that as one, as one of the items to include in their request. And I was surprised. I preferred that they take on that, because I was very concerned with the historic record. Um, and, and I was hoping that they would actually go past and discuss what they really wanted to fund them. But when it wasn't a, a priority of the trustees, um, I don't see that as being a priority here. Sure, go ahead. Just a, 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 I'll make a very quick clarification on that. The Board of Historic Preservation was the, the primary concern for, for that room, the historic record. 
is an independent group called the Cape Elizabeth Preservation Society. They have tended to focus more on what goes on in that room. They, they volunteer there every week. They're very possessive of, of everything that goes on in that room and extremely, I think you know most of those volunteers who've been there. And I, I don't think it, you know, it represents any absence of priority for the, the trustees. They just take a back seat to the historic preservation folks and, and you know, feel that those folks are perfectly capable of advocating on their own. Councilor Moore. Yes, uh, before the town manager continues on with his list, I, I would like to mention as much for uh, Councilor McKinney's knowledge as well as for the viewing public that a l we're given a lengthy list of items to pick and choose from when we have to decide what we can include before we cut off the list each year. And um, the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust request was in that list. It was cut off. It, was, it fell below what we felt we could afford to fund at that time. So at that time, we did not say that it was more of a priority than fixing the door or the, or the um, uh, humidity unit at the library. It didn't make the list. And as far as the, the library committee, they had other priorities at the time with a very limited budget. Uh, also, I want to mention that when we voted earlier this past year to set a cap for the council, the future budget, it was noted that one council could not really bind the actions of the next council when it, when it came to that, and we would hope that we would be able to adhere to that, and, uh, but we would also again have to discuss it at the time. And since we have had a change in personnel here on the town council, I also want to uh, speak to Councilor McKinney to say he has to make up his own mind on what he feels is in the best interest of the town and not feel that we committed to anything because I don't believe that the council committed to anything other than to revisit this issue. Manager? Would you like to continue with your list? Yeah, the, the, let me, the next, this, the next three I'm going to mention would all again be on an equal tier and would all be lower priority for me than all the other things that I've mentioned. So just to clarify, the last two you mentioned, the library painting and building repair and the temperature humidity control, you would put as second, second, tier, tier, second tier, but of equal priority. Yeah, ought, ought to be done, but they don't involve existing code violations and some of those other things I mentioned. The next three, uh, the re voting of the rear of the town hall. Uh, back in, I, I put the agenda 99, but I, I'm not really sure of the date. Uh, a few years back, the wall that's in back of us it had all this vinyl siding that was put on about 33 years ago now. And when we went out there one day, and it was undulate, undulating like a wave, uh, the whole wall, and pieces started to come off. And there was a little bit of a breeze, and you know we were afraid it was gonna come crashing down on the car. Uh, so what happened was the, the council appropriated some money. We immediately replaced the, this wall. And at one point, the, we, the town in the early 70s, late 60s, had, had, uh, had put urea formaldehyde behind all the walls, not a good substance. So there's, there's all these, if you take off that, that old aluminum siding, there's all these holes all over the place. So you take that off and you got an absolute mess in your hand. So anyway, they, they replaced this back wall and you know they were so happy with the result, and the the town center committee was aghast at at the vinyl siding, and you know they, they didn't feel it was appropriate. They wanted more, the, the, you know they thought it was an, it was a disgrace for the town hall to have you know this early era aluminum siding is what it is. So anyway, they decided to do the rest of that side of the building, the front and this side, and we ran out of money. And the back of the building was never done. So what you have in the back is a whole series of patches, some of which, you know, other pieces fell off. We had birds chip at different pieces, and Ernie and his crew and has gone, has gone into different times and used some of the siding we took off and put it there. But, you know, what we have now is, is a mishmash of aluminum siding. We also have some painting needs. And this, he has an estimate that is not $26,000. When I put this together, I did this estimate based on what it had cost us. He's been working, he, he actually has an $11,000 estimate, 
but, but I'm still not, the way I've seen projects work, I'm not convinced uh, that that's the amount. We would only need six, I think, to be on the safe side to get this done, including some of the painting of the trim around uh, 16,000 and not 26,000. Uh, this is 10,000 overstated uh, when, when we got new information. But I think it's important to finish the building. Uh, you know, it's, it's a matter of this, this building we're in now, the council chamber was built in 1938, maybe, if anyone know better than I do, about in, in the 1930s, I think. So, you know, it's now about 70 years old. Half the time that it's been here, it was the natural clap audience, and the other half time, we have this aluminum siding that the other side showed, once we took it off because it was poorly done, there's all this rot in the wood afterwards. So what we want to do is, is do the last side. It's not something that needs, unlike these other things, you know, it needs to be done, it should be done, it is not something that immediately needs to be done, but without getting in the debate again, I rate it higher than some other things that I won't mention. Uh, family fund day funding reinstatement. Uh, this is just a matter that's something because the budget cuts have been eliminated. We lived off, you know, monies over the years, but the account now is 100% completed. Uh, there would be the volunteers who put this on. Family Fund Day has been a wonderful community event since 1982, uh, 23 years ago. Uh, you know, they've tried to raise money and, you know, you, volunteers can only do so much doing the program and the organizing. This would pay for the fireworks again and it would help to pay for some of the entertainment and some of the other expenses. You know, in it, the timing of it's important because you know, we need to know now, or pretty soon, you know, we don't need to know this month, but need to know now if there'll be any monies available to, to do this or, you know, we're going to have difficulty with family funding. David, I'm sorry, I know you, no. it's hard to see who's waving their hand around. I just would add to that, because I went back, since I was buying this chair last year, I went back and sort of tried to dredge up my notes on all these things. And that one in particular, I do know, uh, note that we had a discussion and we cut it, but we specifically said, as a finance committee, I mean, not as a, not as a meeting as a council, that um, we would, would not fund it at, at that point, but that we would revisit it and look at it later in this fiscal year, the 05 fiscal year, to see if there were any other revenues that we could come up with. And I'm not arguing as a proponent or not a proponent of family fund day, but I just wanted that noted that that was something that we, the finance committee explicitly said they would look at when there, when, when there might be other revenues available next year. So. Well, I'm going to interrupt the town manager again before he gets to his last item. Uh, I will speak as a proponent of family fund day. And in dredging up your notes, you probably saw that I, I brought the issue up repeatedly. I was very fortunate to work with the Family Fund Day Committee last year. And without the fireworks, it really isn't uh, an event that draws a good crowd. And when we have to make decisions each year on what we do with the taxpayers' money, because it is all their money, we have to cut a lot of things from the budget, a lot of things that we would like to do. But when the taxpayers are giving us, you know, over $20 million a year to, to spend in their best interest, we don't supply pickup service for trash. Uh, in fact, I won't go down the list of things we, we just simply don't supply. Uh, we do supply an excellent school system. We do supply a very efficiently run town government. But what you have to think about is, are we living in a condominium association or are we living in a community? And this is one of those events that defines us as a community and brings the community together and I feel really needs to be funded each year so the younger people in the community who are the biggest attendees of this event really get a chance midsummer uh, to be a community. There are numerous community nonprofit organizations that support, attend, and run this event. It's one of their biggest fundraisers of the year, uh, including the Lions Club, football boosters, you know, uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, the list goes on and on. And uh, you know, we had a good year last year in, in being able to attract some, some musical groups, 
but still, without the fireworks, you, you can't really draw the crowd, and, and it really makes the event. Uh, so I, I plead with the other counselors that when we're considering what to do with these funds, that we try to keep the money in there for Family Fun Day. Council Clark. I love Family Fun Day, but I have a real, real concern with taking the sale of the proceeds of a capital asset, we've sold land, and to use it for Family Fun Day. It just strikes me as a very bad thing to do fiscally. I, too, wanted to revisit the finances. And my intent in doing that would be to say to the manager, let's go over all those budget lines, not just the voter mailing that we know is over by 6000 but let's go over all the budget lines mid-year and see if there's any extra money so that we can fund it. Uh, but I have grave concern for funding Family Fund Day out of the sale of a capital asset. It almost strikes me as akin to someone selling their home to pay for the birthday party that they want to hold. It's just not something that you do if you're financially responsible. So, I, Michael, I want very much to, to work with the manager and you and everyone else to find money for that. And I think we could if we went through the budget line by line. Um, you know, we're, the manager is proposing to put 9000 into legal and other expenses, and we, ha you know, we haven't asked him yet what is what is in our legal line. Do we really need to fund the cost of this transaction out of this transaction, or do we have the money? I don't know. All I'm saying is that there's a whole bunch of budget lines in our operating revenues that we haven't looked at, and I would want to look at those first before we go to proceeds of the capital. David, before okay. your neck gets too stiff going back and forth, I would like to find that clue with Mary Ann, so if you don't mind. I agree, I, I agree with her that this is an ongoing expense. I like the family fund day. I don't think the sale of a property should fund something like that. And another item that I was thinking about, is just to demonstrate what we've had to do to reduce our budgets over the years. If there's one thing I get complaints with, it's the fact that we're no longer doing a spring pickup. And this would not be appropriate here as well. So we have struggled with our finances. We've had to cut. We've cut, cut, cut. And now we have some money available to at least cover some of these one-time, non-recurring expenses, and we need to give serious consideration to it. But the Family Fund Day doesn't really fall in that group as far as I'm concerned. Now, at the risk of not continuing the discussion on Family Fund Day, since we're this far into it, the intent was not to debate each line item before we've heard about all of them. Um, Councilor Slifkayada, did you want to talk about Family Fund Day or I, another I broad want issue? To, well, I want to just clarify the record because um, I, too, agree that when you sell a capital asset, you should, I think it's best to be turning things back into capital asset assets as, as, as a priority. It's not always 100 percent, but the usual course. But I will point out that the lot next door was bought with money well, when we, uh, when we, the town, bought it um, before I was on the council. It was bought to be the location of the um, new public safety building, which has since all gone by the board since we did something different. But um, the money that was used to purchase that did not come from a land acquisition fund. It came from the general fund, the operating fund. So I would say if we're going to be strict about putting the proceeds of that lot back where it came from, it came from the operating fund. I'm not saying that's what I'm suggesting. It may be just, but I wanted to clarify that record because those are the facts. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's I thought it came from surplus, not a general fund account. I thought it came from surplus, which I would do as asset, capital asset. Of the town, my but so maybe my the manager. Right. Maybe the town manager can clarify that. That maybe before he even gets to that, we could let him at least finish <laughs> the list. There's only one item left. Well, the, the, there, there's one, but then I want to briefly talk about some things that the list would have been much longer. Okay. Uh, 
the, the final item is uh, comprehensive planning committee. Uh, we've been I've having discussions with Maureen now a year and a half, uh, suggesting that it's time to get this process going again. It, this, it's always a sign that you need a new, a new comprehensive planning committee when you have a lot of folks that come in the office that don't even know that there's a comprehensive plan, that were not here when the last comprehensive plan was developed. We're a very transient community. There's new people moving in all the time. And we're constantly dealing with issues in terms of, you know, the sewer policy. Carol challenges us, is, you know, Mike, you know, I, I hear you, but this is not in keeping with the comprehensive plan. We, we <laughs> dance around that one a little bit and move on. Uh, you know, you look at tonight's agenda, just about every meeting, you're getting zoning amendments now. You know, there's, there's another one, wetland, and they keep coming up. When you keep getting those things, the issues, that, you know, there comes a time when you've got to say, whoa, let's get together as a community again, see what our needs are, see what our priorities are, and uh, do a comprehensive planning process. Maureen called around, and she asked the consultant uh, with a company that if, if we were to hire you to do this, to work with our community develop a plan, it'd be, what, $40,000. In this case, we have a planner on staff who's willing to devote her nights and weekends away from her young <laughs> child uh, to do this, and I think everyone knows her, her skills and talents. It, it, I think it's time to do this. It's time to, you know, it's time to get started with the process. It's, you know, it's time to get started with the appointment process, with, with figuring out who's on the committee, and it's going to take some money to do this. That, that's why that's on my list. So one final thing, I'll make this quick, David. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the capital improvement plan for this year originally had doubled. You know, in, in winnowing my list to, to these amounts and the, the amount of money that I did put there that ought to be considered for land trust, you know, it, it was knowing that I could have put millions and millions more dollars on that list. You know, I have a list here, and I'm not going to share it all, of all the things that have been cut out of budgets in, in the last couple of years. You know, the list never ends. But I do want to give just two pieces of new information that, that haven't been discussed with the council or with the public because they're fairly new. Ernie, uh, we have some structural issues and challenges with Sperling Church, uh, another historic property we own. And how much was that, Ernie? 265000 A property that we own, that's listed on the National Register of Historic Sites that, you know, I believe would do a fundraising campaign for that, but, you know, I asked myself, are we going to help provide a down payment for that fundraising campaign for a property that we own, that we're responsible for, a place that's over 200 years old that I think most people in the community value as an important asset. Uh, today, and on the council podium, we received a report, I think it's protecting assets. Uh, there's been a lot of complaints about sewers lately. Bob, uh, he might have gone home, maybe we've got to call him a sewer backup. But well, we're getting we're getting more and more sewer backups. We're getting more and more insurance claims. So the council has asked for a report. It came today uh, on sewer infiltration. What problems to solve? Some of our sewer pipes are over 100 years old. These not only involve sewer monies that will come out of the sewer fund, but they also involve a lot of road work, reconstruction of running tide roads, full full width reconstruction of a lot of roads. The estimate to do this project, and it would be bonded, you know, it's not money we need immediately, is $4.7 million, $4,850,000 in uh, 2004 dollars. 4.7 to $4.85 million. Uh, and it's, in, of that, the sewer rehab is 65% of that amount, amount 35% is in roads. You know, the point I'm making is, my list could have been a lot longer. I could have put a lot of other municipal needs. I recognize that the council, is, at least by a four to three vote, the finance may have a desire to give to the land trust. I know there's a lot of people upset that, that I didn't propose the full 75,000 or the full net or whatever. But I think, you know, when, when I look at the whole long list of things, when I look at, you know, what we're responsible as a municipality to take care of, you know, I, to me, you know, it didn't go back, and it wasn't a setup, what I said at the beginning, but common ground. I would hope that, you know, everyone understands that there are different needs and priorities, and whatever you decide on this is, you know, we'll deal with it. I just wanted an opportunity to provide through the council what I saw as municipal needs as well, and in, in, in the context of giving money to the land trust, because 
Uh, we have so many needs, and I, I think we need to be aware of those, and I really appreciate, David, you asking this question that I've gone on at length and having the opportunity to uh, speak at length. So, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I, think it's, I think it's very important that we as counselors have the benefit of the town manager's list of priorities. Um, somebody who's been in, in the town in a management position for 25 years. I mean, you, I think that we all acknowledge the insight and the, um, the wisdom that you bring to the advice that you give us. We don't always follow it, but we appreciate receiving it, and I think we all take it to heart all the time. So thank you for that. So with that um, information now available to us, um, here's one proposal for how we might go forward, but it is only that. Um, we, uh, by the list that we've been given, it's, the number has now been reduced by $10,000. The uh, estimated cost for reclapboarding the rear of Town Hall has gone down from $26,000 to $16,000. So our list of line items, taking out the land trust issue for a moment, um, now it totals $99,000. So, I guess there are two issues as I see this. One is whether there is interest by the Finance Committee in funding the entire list. And I've we certainly heard some objection to funding the entire list. Family Fund Day specifically. Excuse me, with those particular numbers attached? Right, with those particular numbers attached. Yeah. Um, and the other issue is whether we're going to carve out a piece of this to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, and if so, what that amount should be. If there is a desire to fund the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust with $70,000, we can't fund the entire list at the numbers that are here. If there are four votes to fund the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust with no more than $50,000, there remain sufficient funds to be able to fund the entire list of what we have in front of us. So, one and I'll, I'll wait, but I just, uh, okay. just so you don't have to keep yeah. going. Okay. So, you know, one initial question might be, you know, at the outset is, do we have four votes? Are there four counselors who are willing to commit more than $50,000 to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust? And if there are, if there are four votes, then we're going to need to winnow down this list because we're not going to be able to fund the entire list. So I guess my initial inquiry, um, I would be inclined to ask whether we have four people who are interested. May, may I ask a question? I, yes, you may. In Clarification. Yes. Before we get to that, uh, and considering what we would uh, do. I'd like to ask the uh, town manager um, about the land acquisition. I, I don't have a great familiarity with the larger um, issue of how much land we're acquiring and the long-term plan for that. I, I'm very familiar with this particular piece, the Jordan Farm. I've read through it and so forth, but I'd like you to explain a little bit about how you see that moving forward. The town of Cape Elizabeth is. May, may I? I was, no, yeah. no, please. The town of Cape Elizabeth worked very cooperatively with the Cape Elizabeth <coughs> Land Trust over the years. Uh, I think the the first acquisition we did was a was a piece on another Jordan farm over by Great Pond of the friend with friend Jordan. The cost of that was seventy five thousand. We donated twenty five. The Land Trust raised twenty 
there was, was a total of 75. I, we put in uh, one third of the 25,000. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, the town worked uh, with the Hubstone Condominium Association, which Richard Hopsu was here, uh, and there was an acquisition of the undeveloped, there was, a, there was another whole phase of Hubstone due to be done. And in that case, we cooperatively worked with them, we gave them a donation for that, for that particular project. Uh, a more recent one, a very significant one, was the Robinson Woods parcel uh, off Shore Road. Uh, that was a major, major donation by John Robinson. Uh, they received money for the lands to main future, and we contributed, uh, from the town contributed 250,000, of which we took 100,000 out of surplus of funds unexpended elsewhere, and we, we borrowed 150,000 is being amortized over several years. We have a we have a history of cooperatively working with them on different projects. The Jordan parcel uh, came along the William Jordan farm, and they approached uh, through through farming circles and others, the federal government and the land to main future. It was very successful, and you've probably seen emails of you know obtaining uh, loads of money, uh, and uh, they also you know raised monies as well from from citizens on that who were generous. Uh, from the very beginning, they were hoping that the town would contribute as well. Uh, the town, because of Kaleski and because of all these other things we've talked about, and because, because our own land acquisition fund, which we had had, had dwindled to nothing, we weren't in a position when they came to us to come up with the money. They had a discussion with the council and with the finance committee. They were looking for some assistance, as, as, as Philip mentioned. Uh, the finance committee at one point last spring voted four to three to uh, to uh, provide them an amount that was estimated at 70 to 75,000. 70? 70,000. Uh, 70, and it was based on the net proceeds after the, the we actually had two years of $75,000 that was listed in the budget as an estimated revenue. It was the previous fiscal year, but the money never came in because the closing didn't occur. And then we had that 75,000 again in, in this year's budget. Uh, what, what had happened was in selling this property, there was some complications that have since been resolved. But it kept getting delayed, delayed. And it came on the council as Mary Ann asked for the agenda once. It got delayed, and uh, you know, eventually the property was, was meant to finally close and it's here this evening. As to you know where this where this money goes, as you know, there's no motion on the table yet, so you know I don't know. But but it's but it's my understanding. But to the land trust, some of their members had borrowed money, had lent money, some of their board members to the land trust to, to help do this, because when they were having the time of the closing, they'd come up with some matching funds. It wasn't all there. They did some more fundraising, but they sort of tapped out you know, a lot of their resources, and you know, they kept fundraising, and at this point, as I understand it, they have actually paid back all of those members. But, you know, but they're always looking for opportunities, and opportunities come along all the time, the different acquisitions, and a lot of these things happen on short notice, and they want to be prepared on to act on short notice if some opportunity comes up to uh, to at least you know put down payments forward and to do these other things. And you know even though you know to my knowledge you know this, they, have, they always have talked with different citizens. We don't know they're an independent group who all they're talking to, but you know there are down payments that need to be made, and there's other things, and you know they would like to replenish their their. Uh, their kitty so that they can be responsive uh, as needed. Have, have we um, taken care of the debt that you referred to previously that was amortized over a number of years? We're still paying debt for various land acquisitions. So the, the when we bought the Gulf Crest Fund, we're still, that was 560000 That debt's still being paid. Uh, we're still paying debt for the purchase of the, the town farm, the poor farm. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually bought that from the poor of the town. Uh, uh, that we had to transfer some monies over to that. And this year, uh, you might not have seen the email. Right. Uh, I, I, have, I have the email. I had asked Mike um, how much, what was in this year's budget for land acquisition and debt service and all that kind of stuff. All the projects he mentioned, if you roll them together, the fiscal year 2005 budget, which is this year's budget, contains $167,500. $76 for debt service related to land acquisition. So the town will be paying a little over $167,000 this year for land acquisition costs for debt. So 
it sounds like to me, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems as though the land trust has acted as an um, augmentation of, town, of the uh, town government in terms of uh, identifying and acquiring land for the benefit of the citizens of the community in terms of uh, providing open space and for future uh, use by the citizens. Is that an accurate assessment? I, I, I'm not sure of the definition of augmentation. They're an, they're an independent 501c3 with, a, with an independent board of directors, but over the years there's been a very close, cordial relationship uh, with the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. We also, I really should have mentioned in the whole list, of the, the town farm, we, the town gave them a 50 year, 50 year easement, 75, 50, 50 year easement to protect that as open space. It, you know, th they're independent, totally independent, but there's been a very cooperative, cordial relationship as land protection, preservation, you know, as, you know, as mentioned in some of the emails you've probably seen, is a priority in the comprehensive plan. And, you know, it's, it's like anything, it's, you know, all these things are, a terrific, and you know, there's a little bit of tension right now with a lot of needs, and you know, that's what happens when things are tight. But you know, they're, they're still all friends, although some of them are problematic maybe with some of the comments. But it, uh, it's generally just been a very quiet place. Any other questions at this, well, at this point, Councilor McKinney? But well, you'll still have the opportunity for more. Sure. I, I, well, I'll continue just a moment if it's okay. all right. Sure. Um, Councilor Moles mentioned earlier the importance of Family Fun Day, and you know, as we talk about these issues. I, for one, would absolutely agree with that. Um, and when we have extra capital, I mean, it comes in different in different forms. If you sell a piece of land or you acquire it through uh, a rebate from the state or you have additional revenue from taxation or you have additional savings because your public works people are more efficient than you thought they might be on a particular project, it's all revenue for the town and it should go to the betterment of the town. Um, in my view, I think this town needs a an event, at least once a year, that brings the community together. I think it, it's what makes a community um, feel like a community. It feels like you're part of something when we all can get together in a location to celebrate. And since we've lived in the town since 1998, I know with my children, we have attended that event each year, and I just wanted to express that because I think it's really important when we're considering these issues that it's not just a um, way to spend money, but it's a way to bring people together. And it's a valuable thing to do. With regard to these other issues, there's no question that they're important. And I have complete faith in the manager in terms of his uh, ability to identify what's most important to the town. And um, I appreciate you doing that. You were suggesting um, a process, um, you know, to talk about it, where there are four votes for the land trust. I, I'd like to suggest just an alternative, maybe, and it's just a suggestion. Um, after hearing about this list, what we did at the very beginning was we saw that there was consensus. There seemed to be general agreement on the property tax relief for 75000 and the legal expenses for 9000 Okay, well, maybe I misconstrued on the first one then. But I'd like, I would just like to know, it'd be helpful to me to know, do we have a general consensus on any of these items? You know, if we took a straw poll, because then we could stop talking at least about those items. You know, if we had seven finance committee members who thought we should fix the rental units at Fort Williams for $9,000, you know what I mean? Then we could put that one aside at least and I don't think we have consensus for all these items but I'd at least like to know if we had consensus for any of these items and if we don't we can keep talking about all of them because it is sort of zero sum game. Council Mole, did you have your hand up? Well, actually <coughs> Council Lynch had her hand up first. Okay. You may not want to wait that long but <laughs> 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 I think both of you have made a good suggestion. Um, my concern, though, is before we get there, we've heard the manager's advocacy for his program. And I think that we need to revisit at least other points of view on the history of the land trust before we move forward. Because frankly, 
on whether we have 79 or 99,000 depends on whether there are four votes for 70,000 or 50,000. No, I just, pardon me? For nothing. Um, I guess there's some votes for nothing. So I, I realize that this is a difficult issue and the manager has worked hard to put together a list and I appreciate, I appreciate very much the work that he's done. But it is a question of limited resources and I would hope that I could have a few minutes to at least give my impression of where we've been and what the town would benefit by spending the 70000 because so far all we've heard over and over again is giving money to a private group as if we're throwing it away. And, and I feel strongly that um, there are true benefits. And I also think the history of this transaction is important. So um, I would, I guess, request of the finance chair that I'd be allowed to go through that before we... And I didn't mean to suggest for a moment that you wouldn't be given that opportunity. And I think that everyone should have that opportunity to speak to that issue. And when I was proposing as a process that we look to see whether we have four votes, it would certainly have required that people first have an opportunity to voice their concerns, their position, um, okay. yay or nay I, on I that. Thought you were looking to but no, I, was, I wasn't looking for just to go straight to a show of hands, yay or nay. Um, I was really more in the process mode than I was in the vote seeking mode at that point. But Council Knoll. Not to interrupt, but as a matter of process, that's pretty much what I was going to suggest, was that uh, we just go down the table, uh, let the other councilors hear our thoughts on this biggest of all issues, make a decision on that issue, and we know what we have left for the other issues before we do any voting. And that's, I think, what I'd like to do, um, to get a sense of what support there is for the land trust, to know whether that's an item that's on the table or off the table. And it will tell us what remaining funds we have to work with. And then we will go through to see what consensus we have um, on the other item. So, Councilor Lynch, would you like to start us off? Sure, um, thank, and thank you. Um, I, first of all, I do want to thank all of the citizens who've um, written and called me and, and I'm sure other councillors in, in um, recent days. Um, the input is important, particularly because it is a difficult issue. Um, and also, because it's a difficult issue on a close call, I think it's important for people to understand our rationale on where we are on this. And my rationale is predicated at least in part on the history of this transaction, so I hope you'll bear with me. Um, I, I made some notes to make sure that I covered uh, at least my sense of the history of it. Uh, in the summer of 2003, I was town council chair, and land trust representatives contacted me about preserving the Bill Jordan and family farm, and in particular, how to work with the council. and when it should go on the council agenda. Um, for those who are not familiar, the farm is located at the intersection of Spurwink and Wells Road. At that time, the land trust had just received word of um, an award of $1.1 million in grants from the state and federal government to acquire the development rights to 47 acres of the Jordan Farm east of Wells Road. And I think it's important also for the public and the council to clearly understand what that means. Um, specifically, the money funded a conservation easement conveying to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust all commercial and residential development rights in perpetuity. Um, I learned that word in law school, but it means forever. The Jordan family retains ownership of the land, including the right to sell the land. All future owners, however, are bound by the easement. The easement also requires the Jordan Farm and any subsequent owners to maintain the view of the marsh from Wells Road. 
the easement value for the development rights was assessed at that time at $1.65 million. The Jordan family themselves contributed to the project by offering a discount of $345,000 off of the assessed value, uh, leaving a gap of $200,000. In November of 2003, the land trust wrote to the town and requested that the town make a grant of $100,000 towards the purchase of the development rights. As council chair, I thought it was important to refer that request to the full finance committee, although I think the land trust hoped that it would go on the council agenda immediately, which I think had been the practice in the past. Um, I felt strongly, though, that the request needed to compete with other budget requests for fiscal year 05, which began in July of 04. Um, this so the original delay in town council action was so that we could look at the land trust request on a level playing field and not give the land trust request a special advantage by looking at it not in relation to all the other demands on our um, resources. The town council subsequently referred the land trust request to the finance committee and the finance committee um, looked at it last spring. The Finance Committee, the full council, weighed that request along with all other requests, school, public works, public safety, etc. After reviewing all the budget requests, a 4-3 majority of the Finance Committee decided that we couldn't fund the full 100,000 requests of the land trust, but that we should provide a grant of $70,000 towards the development rights. Former Councilor McGinty was among the majority. The money we determined at that time had to be contingent on the sale of the lot next to Town Hall. And for obvious, prudent reasons, it could not be appropriated before the closing of the sale of that lot. Legal issues throughout 2004 delayed the sale of the Town Hall lot, and the closing did not take place until last month. Well, the land trust had a closing date for the Jordan Farm easement before the sale of the lot next to Town Hall. Indeed, the closing actually took place before the Finance Committee could complete work on the FY05 budget. The land trust raised the remaining money needed, $200,000, through a variety of means, including community donations and loans by board members. Thus, the closing for the easement for the Jordan Farm development rights took place in the spring of 04, before the town could make the appropriation, and again, before we had even completed the work on the town budget. I think, in fact, we were still waiting for the school budget at that time. Um, you know, my, it seems to me that had the land trust not funded the $200,000, the other grants, the $1.1 million, and the entire acquisition could have been jeopardized. The land trust, it seems to me, acted in good faith and took prudent action to protect an acquisition of land that is very important to all the people in Cape Elizabeth. Some might feel that because the land trust managed to close on the deal without town help, that help should not be forthcoming today. I don't hold that view. Were we to deny the land trust request tonight simply because they did what they had to do in order not to forfeit or lose the $1.1 million in federal and state grants and not to lose the conservation easement, I think we, we will be sending the land trust and other community organizations a very harsh and illogical mes message. As um, Councillor McKenney pointed out, um, and I think as the history shows, the land trust has an ability to act with more speed and flexibility than the town council can at times, given the difficulty of working through um, budgets. So um, I think it's very important that we not lose sight of that. If the town council thought that it was important enough to fund, and I realized it was acting as the finance committee last year, we should be grateful that the land trust board members acting in good faith lent personal assets in order to permit the acquisition to go forward at a time when town funds were unavailable 
due to both our delay in voting on their request, our own um, schedule of the way we do our budget, and the on-plan delay in the town lot closing. So that's the history of it, and I just think it's very important for people to understand that. I also want to take a minute to look at the cost and the benefits. First, the cost. Some say making a grant of $70,000 is a cost that we can ill afford, but I think we need to put this cost into perspective. We have a $26 million plus town budget. This is a one-time expenditure of $70,000. It's less than 1% of our annual budget. In fact, it's approximately 0.25%. Now, as uh, Michael and others mentioned earlier, the 05 fiscal year budget does contain an additional $167,000 in debt repayment for other land acquisition, such as for the Goldcrest and the Robinson Woods. Even if you add those two together, we are still dedicating less than 1% of the total town budget that's municipal and school for land preservation. It strikes me that that's a small price to pay for protecting Cape's ever-decreasing open space and protecting a rural character. I think it's also important to recognize the avoided cost that the town realizes for, for taking this land out of development. Residential development strains the town's financial resources. Each new home raises the cost of public safety solid waste and educational services, to name just a few. When you think about it, the cost to educate a small family in this house requires the taxes that we get from a million dollar assessed residence. Um, you have to build a house that's assessed at a million dollars to educate two children in this town per year. So. Um, development really does strain our um, financial resources. The 47 acres covered by the easement could have supported 12 houses. So in the long run, by removing the land from development, the town saves money. Another benefit, the parcel is very special and worthy of protection by any measure. In 1989, the town completed an assessment of the visual resources. I understand that to be the the views in town. That assessment concluded that the view of the marsh from Wells Road was the number one ranked view in terms of importance. All you have to do is drive by Wells Road today and see how development is encroaching on that view. The comprehensive plan's number one land use goal is to preserve, and I say, the remaining rural character of the town. Now, how do we do that? There's only a couple of ways that we can do that. We can adopt zoning, which robs landowners of the value of their land. Or we can purchase the land and or development rights. In this particular case, state and federal governments and taxpayers, along with land trust contributions, have funded 95% of the cost of the acquisition of the development rights for 47 acres. How fortunate can we get? We're asking taxpayers to fund a grant of $70,000 to protect perhaps the 47 most scenic acres in town from development. Now, some will say, but the town isn't getting anything for its money. And I have to say, I really differ. Um, when I first visited Cape Elizabeth 30 years ago, the western part of the town was sprinkled with farms and open space. 21 years ago, when I moved here, it hadn't changed too much. The change has started and it has not stopped. Riverview, Elizabeth Farms, Cross Hill, and Layton Farms have all left indelible marks on the landscape. I hate having you behind me. I think we should be in a circle. I'm but, not like your face. Um, <laughs> in 25 years, we've lost five of the six working farms in the western side of Cape Elizabeth. I think there were only three or four working farms left in our town. The benefit to the town and the citizens is clear, and that's not to say that we don't need the other things that the town manager mentioned, but this easement works to preserve family farming in Maine, to preserve our rural character. 
It protects an important previously identified scenic vista and it protects open space in an area of town that is rapidly losing its open space. And the amazing thing to me is that we get to participate in this for a small fraction of the cost. Now, I know some people may say, yeah, Marianne, you're right, the benefits are great, but the closing has occurred, the protection and the benefits already exist, and we don't need to spend this money. And that's why I want to talk a little bit about precedent and trust. We've partnered with the land trust on several acquisitions. Each partnership has to stand on its own. I don't buy the argument that to do something today creates an expectation of future dollars. Each council must decide for itself what the priorities are. And of course, until the final appropriation, the council is free to change its mind. It has to be that way. Had the tax cap passed, I wouldn't be saying what I'm saying tonight. We have to be free at all times to change our minds. Um, but this land parcel is unique. I'm sorry, each land parcel is unique. Some are worthy of protection and some are not. And every budget year presents its own set of demands on town resources. And the council, again, always needs to be free to consider new demands and extenuating circumstances. So I don't see this vote as a precedent for all future land trust purchases nor do I see the Finance Committee vote as legally binding on the Council. However, I think it's very important to have trust between the Town Council and community organizations. The Land Trust asked for this money a year and a half ago. We delayed acting on this in order to consider their request, along with all the other budget requests, for FY05. We voted as a Finance Committee in FY04, in 04, for the FY05 budget to award a grant contingent on the sale of property. Through no fault of the land trust, the land could not close, the town could not close on the sale of property until a month ago, thus freeing up the proceeds. Then Councillor McGinty, one of the four councillors voting in the majority, resigned. I realize again that voting in the Finance Committee doesn't legally bind the Council until an appropriation is made. But it strikes me that absent extenuating circumstances, we should follow through on our commitment to the land trust. There's one other point I want to make because I've heard from four school board members who oppose this grant. And I'd like to remind everyone that what we're talking about is a fiscal year 05 budget item, and this would have no impact on the fiscal year 06 school budget. So I just thank you for um, letting me <coughs> go on at some length on this. Um, I appreciate again everything I've heard from everyone on this. Um, we may not always agree. I think reasonable people may differ on this. This is just the kind of thing that reasonable people may differ on. But my own view is based on the unique location and the views afforded by that parcel, that the town identified this as long ago as 1989 as worthy of protection. And because I don't see any extenuating circumstances that have occurred since we last visited this last spring, so I think we should abide by the commitment that we made then to the land trust. Thank you. Thank you, Again, Town Floor Lynch. Thank you for the time. Councillor Swift Kayata, would you oh, care to okay. speak next? You just threw me off track. I thought we were going that way, but th that's fine. Um, I appreciate Councillor Lynch's words, especially her closing words. I do think that reasonable people can disagree on this. She and I disagree, we so. <laughs> and we will. <laughs> but I, I know that we are all trying to do what we sincerely think is best for the citizens. And I mean by we, we on the council, and I mean by we, we in the land trust, because I'm a member of the land trust too. And um, it's, a, it's a very difficult decision. Um, I also want to thank the people who have um, sent me their emails or, or called me. I haven't gotten any letters because there hasn't been any time to get letters on this issue. This all sort of seems to be 
people seem to be very aware of it mm. at the very last moment. Um, but I wanted to thank people for their input. I've heard from 13, I've received 13 emails, including a couple from board members and one from the executive director, um, in favor of the land trust donation. I've heard from 11 against. So I'd say it's pretty evenly split. And I've heard from four others that I really couldn't characterize as one way or the other, people who had different views or said, good luck, this is a tough decision, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So um, tonight, what we're considering in this finance committee and then what we will be considering um, as we decide and in, in, when we get back to the council meeting is a request for the town to contribute funds uh, to contribute to the land trust, 70, their request of $70,000 of the proceeds of the sale of the town center lot next door. First of all, I definitely want to say that purchasing the development rights to the Jordan Farm was a great project. I'm a member of the land trust, and I made a personal donation of my own money specifically for the Jordan Farm development rights purchase last year. I also voted in economically rosier times um, for the town to make a major donation for the purchase of Robin, the Robinson Woods, which was another land trust project, so that the public could use that land. I'm a great believer in open space in Cape Elizabeth to preserve the rural character that most of us seem to love. And I also want to emphasize that the generosity of the Jordan family the hard work of the land trust to preserve Cape resources should be appreciated by every citizen of Cape Elizabeth because we all benefit from, from their work and generosity. Given that, however, I have several grave concerns about the land trust's current request. First of all, as much as some people believe otherwise, and I, I include, I mean by that, some of the people who have written me emails, um, our vote tonight, contra contrary to what some of them seem to think, our vote tonight will have zero impact on the Jordan Farm right purchase. The development rights, as Councillor Lynch said, have already been purchased. The deal closed last March 29, 2004. The land trust bought the rights, so the property can never be developed. It can be used only as a farm, as I understand it, from now on. Um, the, the rights were bought, not the land. The Jordans continue to own the land, basically as Councillor Lynch um, outlined. The public gets the right to enjoy the view over the land and to not to enjoy not having development there. Um, but the public, just for people who have asked me, the public, as I understand it, has no right to walk over it. It will still be it's still private property of the Jordans. So, so what we're considering tonight, in my mind, has nothing to do with the future of the Jordan Farm land. It is pure and simple a proposed donation to a private charitable organization, a gift to replenish the stewardship and land acquisition funds of the land trust for future, but as of yet, unknown projects. So that's my first concern. Is that this thing we're deciding is a donation, <coughs> not anything to do with preserving the Jordan Farm development right that's already done thanks to the land trust. Secondly, I'm very concerned because this donation would hand away the citizens money to a private board, the land trust board, that however worthy and well intentioned is unelected and not responsible to or controlled by the citizens. It would give away the rights of all Cape citizens to give input, share priorities, and otherwise participate in the decisions about how to use their own money. When the council makes a decision to spend money, citizens have a chance to come speak to us about the matter, and we all know, well, Mr. McKenna may not know yet, but he'll soon find out. We hear plenty of opinions. The council is responsible to all of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. The land trust board is not and does not have to have the public participate in their decision making. As an elected town councilor, I'm a steward of the public assets of the town of Cape Elizabeth, assets that belong to the people. It is inappropriate, I believe, to cede that responsibility 
to the land trust or any other private organization. If the people of Cape Elizabeth want money allocated for land acquisition, then that money should be controlled by and it dispersed from a town fund for specific future projects. Just, you know, if the land trust comes to us with something specific, wants it, fine, they can ask. But I think the town should retain control of this chunk of money. The money should not be just given away to a private organization for them to decide based on their own, not the townspeople's, priorities and judgments what to spend it on. And I mean this with no slam on the land trust. I think they're very well intentioned, but I think it's inappropriate for me as a steward of the town's assets to be ceding that authority to another private group. And third and last, my concern is <coughs> about giving 70000 to the land trust when we have so many other pressing economic and fiscal needs now. Um, in response to the pleas of the citizens for property tax relief, the council will be capping spending this year despite a multitude, and I mean a multitude, of pressing school and municipal needs. There are many important capital needs that are not being met in Cape Elizabeth. We're looking at spending several hundred thousand dollars on a traffic light at the high school in the next year, unfunded by TAC, which is the regional transportation group that we hope would fund 80 percent, but has decided not to. We need to build up our surplus. The council voted on that a couple months ago. Um, we need to build on it because it's on the low side according to our auditors. Our revenues are finite, and I can think of many other competing and important needs for $70,000, including more tax relief for our citizens. And if we are now going to start giving new big donations of the public's money to private organizations, we should at least set up a way to get the public's input on priorities and on which charities, the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, the Land Trust, the Fort Williams Charitable Trust, and so on, um, to have a level playing field so um, if they, they all would like, I'm sure, to have us give them money. So given all those factors, I can in good conscience ask the people of Cape Elizabeth to make such a huge charitable donation to the Land Trust, no matter how worthy their goals, or how much I personally support them. Now is not the time in my mind to be giving away the people's money to a private organization. I personally think a far better use of the proceeds of the town center lot sale is to look at some of these other things on this list, but then if there's any left over after we make decisions on those things, and I presume there will be, um, I would like to see it used for critical needs, especially capital needs, and put the rest into surplus to cover emergencies and upcoming capital needs. So for these reasons, while I respect and admire the work that the Land Trust has done um, last year on the Jordan Farm Project, as well as their many other efforts, and while I urge Cape citizens to support them personally with their private donations, as I do, and as many of you do, I regretfully, and I do mean regretfully, cannot support making the requested large gift to the land trust. I think to do so would be imprudent and not in the best interest of Cape Elizabeth citizens. And I thank you for your time with my spiel, so I'll, I'll let it up to everybody else. Thank you, Councilor Swift-Kayata. Council Knoll. Sending that way. <laughs> Council Fritz, have you been waiting to say something? <laughs> Alternate positions. Um, <laughs> point, counterpoint. Great. Right, right. Council Fritz, if you would like to speak next. Well, I, 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 I mean, Council first. Holt, the, I was going to suggest you go that way this time. Mm -hmm. We, we always like go to speak that last. Mm -hmm. You know that. If I get to speak last and I know how many three and four, then I make my speech very Will short. Will that change your vote? It might. Because he's talking about the length of his vote, his speech okay. buying. I believe I ceded my time to the Honorable Councillor Frick. <laughs> well, I um, just a couple of comments on the items that are in in the list that's been presented as alternatives. Um, I mean, something like the the voter information education. Um, I, I don't think should be considered as a deficit until the end of the year when accounts can be shifted around. Um, 
essentially all of these items were considered in the last budget. Um, and many of them rejected, such as the, um, the door for the, the fire station. We're looking into regionalizing and even closing that um, fire station because the South Portland station is in better shape, actually. Um, so I think that all of these items can wait until the, the next budget process and be considered um, against maybe your longer list, um, Mr. Manager, of, of things, but we only have this list we're, we're being um, presented with. And on a real um, policy sort of thing, I really don't think that sale of uh, town-owned land should go for maintenance items, for one-time events, for public education, those sorts of things. It should go into, I believe, the purchase of open space. Um, so, and that then brings me to um, the actual land trust um, proposal. Um, and I do want to acknowledge all the emails and you're passing them along to us because some of them I think didn't get to us they aren't so it was very good that, that you passed them all along and it was a lot to read today <laughs> sure. um, uh, but it, it, it's very important to hear uh, from people even at the last minute um, and I want to thank Marianne I think you really put together a, a good history for everybody because I think Particularly characterizing um, this, and I would disagree with uh, Councilor Cripsiata, that this is a gift to the land trust. I really disagree with that concept. Um, if we had been budgeting all along for a land acquisition fund, if the, um, if the sale of the land next to the town hall had been in a more timely way, uh, we could have become the partner of this project that we should have been in the first place. Um, and the reason I think we should have been is because preservation um, of open space and particularly farmland preservation and the rural character of the town is such a strong statement in our comprehensive plan. And that's what we're really here to fulfill is the comprehensive plan, um, which got strong consensus and surveys and all of our citizens when it was put together, and I served on that committee. Um, I mean, the, really the number one stated goal of the comprehensive plan is to preserve the real character of Cape Elizabeth. And in my view, the best way to do that is to allow the farmers to continue to farm. And I think this purchase of development rights, it, it avoids the cost of developing the land if, if um, the Jordans chose to, to sell it in order to keep the rest of their farm going. But, and it puts money into their ability to keep the farm going. So um, that's the best way to preserve farmland. But our comprehensive plan makes very strong statements about preserving rural character and what we should do as a, as a town. It says we should take all reasonable steps to preserve the rural character of Cape Elizabeth. I mean, that's a very strong statement. Um, that we need to preserve the assets and values of the town, which are the scenic views. And we proceeded to have a very, um, take a very analytical way of, of, of coming up with and evaluating the scenic views for this town, not with any proposal in mind, but just really evaluating on a kind of a nonpartisan basis. And, and this view over the mark to the Sperling Church uh, over the Jordan land is, is the number one rated. Uh, 
item in that view study. The comprehensive plan goes on to say that the town should adopt an acquisition program seeking money for acquisition of scenic areas through the general fund, through municipal bonds, through grants or private uh, fundraising. I mean, that's precisely what we're talking about here, being a partner and seeking ways to permanently preserve. It says the town should aggressively evaluate the feasibility of purchasing conservation easements to restrict development of selected farmland. I mean, this is quote from our comprehensive plan. That is precisely what this is about. Um, we've taken positive steps in preserving open space, uh, golf rest, um, for multiple purposes, but uh, very much um, for open space. We've partnered with the land trust before, as has been mentioned, um, with Hobstone, with Robinson Wood, uh, with the playground. Um, these proposals have, have, I mean, the playground committee went out and sought grants. The land trust sought out, sought grants and money into the town that we would not have had otherwise. Um, I've been extremely um, impressed with the hard work of, say, the, plan, the, the playgrounds and, and particularly the land trust and their commitment for obtaining those um, multi-million dollar grants that, that they have done and the individual members and what they uh, committed in order to not lose those grants. Um, the land trust had attempted to raise money and had raised money for stewardship of, of the properties that they do own. That was a very responsible thing to do so that the properties are well cared for. Uh, but that had to be delete, depleted, those funds, in order to make this purchase for the citizens of the town of Cape Elizabeth. Um, when the land trust came to us, as I mentioned before, um, we did not have any money set aside that we could grant immediately. And so it had to depend on the sale of the lot next to the town hall. I was not in favor of selling the land to the town selling the land next to the town hall because I felt another uh, part of our uh, goals was to have a town center that had a green common. Um, and I thought that was important to the town. However, when the idea of the proceeds of the sale of that lot could be used to complete a major goal of this town in terms of farmland preservation, I thought that swap was, um, I was willing to put my vote for um, the sale. I, I really think we need to um, honor our commitment that the finance can be made even though there's there's some change in personnel, and I know we don't hold one council uh, responsible to another, but um, I am in favor of the proceeds of the sale going to be a partnership on this project, not as a gift to the land trust in, in, that, in that way of saying it. Um, I I think there are definitely avoided costs um, in, in preserving farmland, um, the costs of traffic, kids in the schools, all the, all the things that go with uh, development. As, as a couple of people said, I quote that on emails today that came to us, um, when land is gone, it's gone forever. Um, so, and to 
to expend money on, say, family fund days from the sale of a piece of land, I mean, that event is gone in a whisper, you know. Um, that, that would be, I think, very short-sighted. So I am in favor of the proceeds of the sale going for this project. Thank you, Council Frith. Council Roberts? Oh, no, I <laughs> hope you were going to go. <laughs> All right. I uh, thank you. I typically don't come with a prepared speech. And I didn't tonight. I guess probably sometimes it sounds like that. But I have taken some notes that I'm going to kind of go down through. I think perhaps even the next time I might ask either Marianne or Ann to write my speech for me. They, they seem to do a good, good job. <laughs> and I want to comp <laughs> I'd like to compliment it'll Chris be, on uh, Rally of the Troops. Uh, I think we had 19 emails after his after his letter went out. Um, I consider the, the folks at the Land Trust to be my friends. I've worked with them over the years. Um, I've worked tirelessly, I've, and I've worked tirelessly for as long as I've been in the town for preserving open space, working on it uh, with the different projects, and I will continue to do so. And I have personally contributed money to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, this one in particular and others in the past. Uh, to, to help with this most recent acquisition. And I've asked other people that I know on a regular basis, <coughs> told them that this is a good thing, that they should be contributing as private citizens to, to help on this cause. And for those that can do it, please, do what, do what you can to help replenish the land trust funds. However, life as we knew it has changed, and we are not in a position to spend tax dollars for a purchase that has already taken place when we have so many other needs. It has been done thanks to all of us that have contributed into the work of the Land Trust. Um, one of the ways that I would like to see the money used uh, would be to pay down the debt that we currently have on the purchases that we've already done. Gullcrest, the Robinson Woods parcel, but the uh, poor farm as we called it. Or replenish our own land acquisition fund. Carol, in fact, stated in her presentation, we had no money available to help out on a timely fashion when the land trust came to us because we had no money in our own land acquisition fund. We should be putting it there and, ask, and as a council, asking the public to come forward and help the land trust out. And I know mo most of us have expressed that same view over, over the last several months. And for those, reason, for those reasons, I didn't support this proposal when it was first presented. And it would be totally hypocritical of me to vote now to give money when I didn't even vote to support the budget that I felt left both the town and the schools short. But I do want to repeat, the Land Trust is a great organization and the public needs to support them. But it's the public that needs to do it this time. The town doesn't have it. So I'll be voting no. Thank you, Council Roberts. Council McKinney. Thank you. You weren't kidding about uh, baptism by fire. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of information digested. <clears throat> I was very in, impressed with the uh, presentation, like I said, by the manager and by the other councilors. It's very informative, and I appreciate your uh, extensive review of the past and you know what you think about what we ought to do. My assessment sitting here is that um, we ought to do a couple of things. First of all, it appears to me that we have some immediate deferred needs that are really important and they're going to have to be addressed soon. And those have been identified by the manager. We have a $300,000 fire truck that can't get out of the garage without being damaged. That, that's an important need and, and so forth. And then he also identified two community enhancement needs, specifically the Family Fund Day, the reestablishment of that fund, that fund, and I think that's important, and comprehensive planning. I agree with uh, Councilor Fritz that comprehensive planning is perhaps one of the most important items that we um, engage in, because it's only through long-range planning that we come to a, uh, that we're able to develop ideas and 
plans that are going to really enhance this community for generations to come. And I think part of that is the land acquisition, and part of that is the protection of, of our resources. Part of that is protecting the port and, and enhancing that as we go along. However, when you look at the public money and the public trust, you have to consider what your responsibility is. And uh, Councilor Swift-Keata pointed out quite clearly that to make a donation to any organization without a specific need identified would put that money in the hands of the organization <coughs> and outside of the purview of the people. And, and that is a problem. I, I firmly believe in what the land trust is doing, and if they came with a specific request for a specific item that they needed to um, have money for, I think that would be a, a, value, a, a um, reasonable consideration for the council to look at. But I think to use public funds to replenish a, a charitable organization's future needs and plans that we're not even aware of would not be the, the appropriate use of public money. So what I am going to recommend is I would recommend that we use $99,000 of the 149 to take care of the line items that have been identified by the manager, and I would take the other $50,000 and I would put it into a comprehensive plan fund for the express use of implementing a comprehensive plan or parts of it as we move forward so that organizations like the Land Trust could come on a short-term basis and say, look, we've identified an opportunity and we need some funds and therefore we could, um, we could act on that quickly. Did you mean a land acquisition fund or a comprehensive planning fund? I, I meant a comprehensive planning fund. I understand land acquisition, but I think if you look at comprehensive planning, it's not always about land acquisition. It might be that we want to build a trail. That's not land acquisition. Maybe we own the land, but we have that gives us a broader spectrum of possibilities. And I think that's what the community wants, is they want options. And the land trust itself has been very involved in trail development and so forth. So what I'm suggesting is that we establish a comprehensive plan fund, and that gives us, the council, the opportunity to um, use the money more creatively if the desire of the people, you know, the people come forward with good projects that are worthwhile and going to help the entire community, we can support them. But I do think that it's necessary, even in a situation where your budget is short, that you continue to do long-range planning and you continue to fund those um, venues that are going to enhance the community long-term. Because if you don't, you're never going to catch up. You'll never have enough money for all the needs and all the things that people desire. It just doesn't happen. So you have to set that money aside on a regular basis to build up those funds and use them you know, where it's appropriate. Thank you, Councilor McKinney. Councilor Moult. Councilor Back, as chairman of the Finance Committee, how about if you go last? All right. If you want to. Well, like Councillor Roberts, I didn't come with a prepared speech, uh, so I've taken some notes as we've gone along. Uh, let, me, let me first start by saying I, I strongly support the mission of the Land Trust, and I hope they continue to do the good works that they've been doing. Uh, that doesn't mean that I support them financially out of town dollars. Uh, we may in the future. We probably will not at this time. Um, it's always an unfortunate thing when uh, you have to hear the word no, especially when you feel so passionately about something. Uh, but we have other things that we need to, to consider. Um, let me also thank the Conservation Committee for all of the great work that they do in all areas of the town and for the input that they've given us uh, towards this decision and many others. I've gotten a number of letters from members of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust that have come in support of us 
making a donation to them. I've gotten a number of letters from members of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust that have said, you know what? We've donated personally so that you don't have to donate through tax dollars. And, and, I, and, they didn't, and these particular people did not support using tax dollars for this particular purpose. I've gotten letters from other people around town not associated with the land trust that were mostly opposed to donating the money at this time. Uh, let me also thank the other town councilors for all the many hours that they thought about this particular issue, as they, as they do all of their issues that come before the town council. And they all do an excellent job. We have a great batch of town councilors. Just sometimes we need to agree to disagree uh, without any personal emotions or animosities. I find the longer I sit next to Councillor Lynch, the more we agree on many issues. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't one of them. But, um, <laughs> Or, or maybe it's when she moved over to this end of the table, she started to drift in our direction. I, I'm not sure. But um, a few things I wanted to clarify that have come up through this discussion. Uh, first, it's an easement. It's not a purchase of land. No one's actually buying any land. Uh, if, it, if, if we were actually buying and holding land, I would feel differently about this issue. Uh, I whole buying land and owning land in, in the town's name or the Cape Land Trust's name has to be more substantial than an easement. Although I, I really think they've done a good thing here with this easement in many respects, but it's not as good as having owned it. Um, I also want to mention a lot of these comments are kind of out of order. Our town already owns over 1,100 acres of open space, not including the state parks. This town has huge open spaces. You know, take a ride through town or look at the map of the town and see how spread out many of our little neighborhoods are. The town already owns quite a bit of open space. I feel we should continue to protect open space, um, but I'll get more to that later. Town budget versus finance committee Town Council. Um, we discussed this issue last spring um, in, in, in reference to what Councillor McKinney said about a specific request. The Cape Land Trust did come to us with a specific request. We simply did not have the funds at the time, which is why we need to build up a land acquisition fund or a comprehensive plan fund. I actually like that idea of the, the comprehensive plan fund because there are many other things besides actual land acquisition that are part of the needs of the, the community. Um, but even though the Finance Committee felt strongly that it was an important item to keep on the front burner, it did not make the cut in the town budget. It could have made the cut in the town budget without us closing the sale of the lot next door. The prior year, we had committed $75,000 to the town budget knowing that we were going to be selling a piece of land and we were going to plug that $75,000 gap when that occurred. We did not do that when we voted the budget in last spring. We could have chosen to do that, but we did not. It did not make the cut at that time. It was not as high a priority as it was. It wasn't sufficiently high enough to be committed to in the budget that, you know, an irrevocable vote being done. So that's why we're sitting here discussing it again tonight. Uh, I have some concerns about, you know, yeah, we support the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, and we have supported them financially in the past, but we have supported them out of funds that we had available to us or could make available to us. Those funds have been depleted. I have additional concerns that this is just phase one of a three-phase project. And times have changed. I think we need to set a new precedent that the town simply can't afford to be making these kind of donations to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust for the foreseeable future. Uh, if Pulaski showed us anything, and if Pulaski did go down two to one, 
but a third of our residents out there are hurting. A third of our residents out there felt so strongly about what could have been potentially the devastating effects of Celeste versus what they're seeing in their own pocketbooks at home that they voted for it. And we need to be responsible to that and listen to that. Responsive to that, listen to it. Um, you know, every year there are many worthwhile items cut from our capital improvement budget bordering, bordering on irresponsible things that really need to be addressed that if we don't address them now are going to be even more expensive to address down the road. They're not going to go away. The costs for construction are going up. The costs to borrow money continue to go up. We've, we've seen the, the dip in that market, but it's on the way up again. Uh, it's a really nice thing that I would like to fund, like all these items on the list I would like to fund. But I just don't see us being able to do that right now. I mean, just, just to give you some perspective, when we sit down to go through the town budget, the $26 million or plus town budget, we're not fighting over 100,000 here, 200,000 there. We're having heated discussions over $1,000 here, $700 there, $10,000 there. Um, are there any school board members here tonight? No? Well, let me, let me address to the, to the school board members. We met with the school board in a, in a joint meeting uh, very recently. And last year, when we set the town budget, I was not in favor of that budget because there were needs that were not being met in both the school and, and the municipal side, as Councillor Roberts pointed out. I, I strongly, strongly support our school system because that is what makes us such a desirable community. Uh, the future of our children depend on getting a good education, and it, it's part of what we are as a community that we support that. But I was, you know, quite irritated with the school board that after the budgeting process, they felt so passionately about their budget and their needs that they uh, instituted uh, additional fees uh, in the athletic programs so that they could maintain those programs without having to cut some teachers. Now, let me start by sincerely apologizing to the school board because I came down on them unnecessarily heavy on that issue when they were really looking out for the, for the best interest of the students. And uh, it just goes to show how passionately some of these discussions can be. And that was a $50,000 amount spread over all the students in the school system. All right? We're squabbling and fighting for very small amounts out of this $26 million budget. We're not making big sweeping purchases. So, you know, $70,000 to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, although it's only a quarter of 1%, that is a large item compared to the discussions we have in the, in the annual budget. Um, so again, my apologies to the Cape School Board for coming down hard on them the other night. Uh, but these are the kind of discussions that go on amongst the council and the school board. This lot that we purchased on the north side of the town hall, the funds for that purchase did not come out of a land acquisition fund. Those funds came out of whether you want to call it the surplus fund or the general fund, they're really one and the same. It came out of taxpayer dollars. And those funds should be returned to taxpayer dollars to do with as the council sees fit. Uh, they don't necessarily need to be spent on a capital item, a land item. They should be spent as the, the council sees fit. The comprehensive plan. It's now, is it, how many years is it, 11, 12, 12, 12 years since we've done a comprehensive plan. So I strongly support us doing a new comprehensive plan. I, I feel that that comprehensive plan may be somewhat out of date. Not totally out of date, but times have changed. Uh, people within our community, have moved, new people have moved in, other people have moved on. Uh, the economic conditions of our state and our town have changed. 
it's time to review that comprehensive plan process. And yes, we have lost five of six farms in that area. And yes, we need to focus on preserving open space. But we do have 1,100 acres of open space. This particular parcel has been preserved through the fine actions of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. What they're asking us to do is to replenish funds so they can go on to do other acquisitions, um, which I just feel we can't afford at this time and should be done out of private funds. Um, you know, this easement is done. I don't think at this time we can afford to commit by committing to this. I think they're going to feel that we're going to commit to phases two and three and we just simply, we, we're not meeting the capital needs of the town and the citizens. Uh, I don't think it's responsible to be, you know, we have to weigh things. And in my view, as an elected town council, in my view is many of the capital improvement projects that the town manager has put forward over the last couple of years that we've had to defray are more important than donating this money at this time. Uh, that does not mean that if the Cape Land Trust came to us with another request down the road for a specific purpose that I wouldn't seriously consider the, the merits of that particular purchase, but I, I don't support donating money to them to replenish their coffers at this time. Um, also of note that these funds are really fiscal year 05 funds this past year, not future funds. However, they do have an effect on future funds. If we take these funds and move them to a land acquisition or a surplus fund, uh, especially if it's gone to surplus, then that may require less tax dollars in the future, and I'll explain what I mean by that. We recently voted as a council to increase what we hold in surplus funds to maintain our high bond rating to allow us to borrow money on behalf of the town, the schools, and other capital improvement projects at a more favorable rate to maintain our current good rating. Well, to meet what we have voted on, we need to put funds aside over several years into that surplus. Uh, so it's pay me now or pay me later. I believe some of these funds should be put, if they're not spent on the list that Councillor McGovern has put forward, they should, some of those funds should be put into that surplus. Councillor McGovern. Sorry, Manager McGovern. <laughs> Uh, should be put into that surplus to prevent us from having to raise those funds through increases in taxes in this coming year. You know, this is a part of our upcoming budget. Um, I had one letter from a Cape Land Trust supporter who said, I donated a significant amount of money to the Land Trust. They requested donations from the public, those that could donate it, and that it would be wrong of us to then take taxpayer dollars, which is essentially a forced donation from those that couldn't really afford to donate or chose not to donate and donate it to the land trust. That was their opinion. I'm just sharing that with you. Um, in reference to some other budgetary items, I want you to know that I, I do not support closing the fire station next to the cookie jar. Uh, I don't support diminishing or eliminating the dispatch service because for $26 million, I think our residents are owed a certain level of service. Um, but I do support the town acquiring ownership in strategic land assets for future uses when those opportunity arise. And that is ownership of land to put a building on, a school building on, a sports field on, uh, a walking path on, wh whatever it might be. This particular reason, we can't even walk on the land. All we can do is look at it. Uh, that was a lot of money to just look at a piece of land. And, you know, when you think of tax dollars, well, if that land was really worth $1.6 million, then why aren't we appraising it at that and collecting the, the properly due tax on that uh, to help defray the cost of taxes of other properties in town? Now. I say that rhetorically, but I do not support increasing the taxes on any of our farmers. Uh, and I think as, if you're watching the budget hearings, I very carefully watched when we did our reassessment how much 
the Alewife Brook Farm was being assessed, what happens to other farms in town. Uh, I spoke to the assessors about this. I've spoken to people to, to make sure that they were still treated fairly enough that they could continue to keep their farming operation going. So that was the uh, some of my observations during the notes. So you know, I think you can probably gather from what I've said, I don't support at this time taking any taxpayer dollars and, and donating it to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. I think it would be irresponsible for us to do that given the current economic and uh, you know tax climate of the town. So I said I've done. Councilor Lynch. Um, just a couple of comments. Um, since some people went over the whole list, I wanted to get back to that. But I also wanted to respond to the issue of this is not good because the town is not owning the land. Some people might say it's actually better that the town is not owning the land. Every time the town owns land, we take on stewardship responsibility and more cost to taxpayers. I think it's also my understanding, I'd love to be corrected if I'm wrong, that when the land trust owns the land, it taxes are paid on it. Am I correct on that? So when the town owns land, we lose the taxes and we have stewardship responsibility and we have to pay for all the upkeep. So the land trust owning the land is really a very good thing and a good deal for our taxpayers because they pay taxes and they pay the stewardship. So I just think that we may dis disagree on this, but I just want to point out there is another side and a benefit to other parties. Um, I also um, have a question uh, of Councillor McKenney. Um, it wasn't, I, I wasn't clear on where you were going with the um, fund that you suggested creating plus the idea that you supported the manager's recommendation, I guess in total. And so my question to you is, just to help me with my confusion, would you support a $40,000 donation to the land trust? Well, let me let me uh, clear up the confusion. I didn't realize that, that that wasn't clear. What I was suggesting is that we support the line items that the manager articulated earlier that it accounted for $99,000 in spending. That is minus the land acquisition. And because he had an additional $10,000 savings on the reclapboarding of the town hall, that, that leaves us $50,000 to deal with if we meet all those other line items, which I think are important. What I would do is take that $50,000 and I would create a separate account that the town controls and I would call it a comprehensive plan fund. And the reason for that is because it could then be utilized at a future date to fulfill our comprehensive plan, uh, excuse me, fulfill our comprehensive plan and that may include land acquisition, it may include easement, it may include trails, it may include anything we put into the comprehensive plan. And what I'm suggesting is that's a long-term investment for the benefit of the town and its people. And I, that's why I, I recommend that. I am in support of the land trust and what they're doing. However, I don't think it's appropriate, as Council Swift Gatta pointed out very clearly, to take public money and fill the um, account of a nonprofit organization, no matter how good that organization may be, because then the public really doesn't have any say over where that money goes. So what I'm suggesting is we control the money, and then if the land trust comes forward and says, hey, we have an opportunity to buy an easement, we need a $20,000 down payment, and this is how we uh, plan to acquire it, I would absolutely support it without okay. question. You might not be aware that we we have, in previous years, and I assume it will come up again in the spring, we routinely make um, grants 
to nonprofit organizations. I think Hospice of Maine and some others we have made grants but, to. But do we know where, what that grant money is specifically for? That's sometimes yes, sometimes okay. no. So we do make some grants. I realize it's not on the order of this, but I guess I would want to pose one more question to you. To the extent that the land trust emptied its coffers yes. to make a purchase of something that was very much consistent with the comprehensive plan, that is a purchase of um, the development rights and a view easement over the what, what the town has previously identified as the number one view to be protected, mm -hmm. um, would you be willing to look at that as a grant under your comprehensive plan idea? Or are you say, or I'm just trying to figure out where we're going. Are you saying okay. tonight that under no circumstances would you consider a grant well, to well, the land trust for the reasons well, stated well, by Earlier. I think Ann's point was totally appropriate for public money, and I think that's that's the point I'm trying to make. And at the same time, I think that the request that the land trust made of the council, it sounds like it was two years ago, appro approximately, um, was reasonable. However, it didn't get funded, and that acquisition has taken place. It's over. I would not support um funding to put money into an account that people other than elected officials control that's what i'm saying okay. therefore if the land trust came forward and said hey we have an opportunity and we need some money and you have a fund and we'd like some of that money to do this specific purpose i would think that would be a very appropriate request Okay, I, and I sense? don't mean to belabor it. I'm just trying to really understand sure. where you were going with that idea. Um, well, on the other items requested by the manager, um, I heard the manager say that the re of the rear of Town Hall could wait. So I don't know why we would rush to do that um, tonight. Um, on the legal expenses, I guess I'd like to know what we have left in our legal account and put that in the same category as replenishing money in the voter mailing and public funding that I think that some of these operating lines, they're going to be over and many are going to be under and we ought not to be trying to fix those issues midstream. We never have before. It strikes me as utterly unusual that we would be doing that tonight. I would support the fire station. I was over there today. Um, I saw the trucks being um, moved in and out. It's like threading a needle. Um, but that's only $12,000. Um, family fun day, I think it's great, but I really have a hard time selling a capital asset. I feel, I really have to say, I'm sitting here tonight saying, I wish we had not sold a lot next to town hall because I find that we're using it to paint buildings and clapboard and that was never, never the intent. So um, it's, it's uh, financially, I think, uh, a mistake. But I would support um, the repairs to the fire station. I think that's in the nature of um, a fix. Not, it's not even a fix. It, it's kind of a renovation of the building. Um, so I could support that. But uh, I think that's about it. Um, everything else strikes me as things that could wait, and I really want to see what else is in the manager's municipal budget request next month, because I know there's going to be stuff there, and we ought to be looking at whether or not we do humidity control in the library versus other things, that the library or the school or any other um, agency the town's going to ask for. And I should say as a follow-up to Councilor Lynch, there is certainly no obligation on our part to spend all of this money tonight. Absolutely. We have a list here of proposed expenditures. We can spend as much or as little of this as we want. And whatever isn't spent presumably will roll over into the operating funds for 
or six. Is that right? No. No, because you voted a spending cap that disallows any use of that money, and it will also uh, impact into some of the other caps that are, that are being contemplated. But it uh, would not be able to be spent, and we, we continue to uh, suffer from that. Well, we this also is an attempt a, to get around the spending. We also have problem with the state with their cap and that they're asking us to fund a homestead exemption, uh, half of the new homestead exemption. Apparently, within a tax commitment cap, so if, if you end up funding that, there's, there's no money, there was no money within the cap authorized for the school debt service that the citizens of Cape Elizabeth have twice voted for. Uh, so, you know, the, the outlook with that new bill that was reported out of that committee is, uh, is, is bad, and that's why I think if we don't take care of some of these maintenance things, uh, the problem's only going to get worse, you know, we've cut We've reduced, uh, I, it, you know, it, it's gotten to the point, you know, we, we, we reduced for non-union pay last year, uh, what the union members thought, which, which wasn't the greatest thing. You know, e even, you know, myself, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's no monies in the budget anymore for me to go outside the state of Maine. All those funds were cut. If we're you know, going... It, this, it's not a pretty picture. And, you know, we keep saying, you know, oh, there'll be funds there, there'll be whatever. But, you know, every year we put things off, we, I look at reports like this, you know, I... And, and yet we want cap cut front, you know, I doesn't, well, Michael, it adds gonna, up and there's if, no money. If we're trying to get around the cap, then we ought to invite the school folks in too and find out what they think should be funded. I mean, this is, this is not right. Could can, I respond can, to that? Well, can I also ask you to respond to one other thing? Can you clarify what you mean? What, what will be the effect of us not spending the balance of this $233,000. If we don't do it in 05, what happens to it? it? It depends on eventually what the state legislature does. It depends on how the council decides to treat these funds within your cap. Uh, you know, it, it was mentioned, you know, we ought to look at the school department's needs. Uh, you know, I, the last I checked, we're doing $8 million through projects for the school department. And yes, we did some municipal ones, but before that, we did an eleven and a half million uh, school project. Yeah. It, you know, we do look at all these needs. You know, you asked, you asked what my priorities were. Uh, you know, the everywhere we turn now, this this blockage is being put up. Not only in terms of caps by the state level and the. Uh, the uh, local level, but there's also continuing mandates, things we need to pay for, and uh, it's, uh, it's getting very, very difficult uh, to, to figure out what all the different requirements and mandates are, and uh, I haven't noted the cost of anything. We're, we're talking code violation issues here. Uh, you know, I, I'd hate to think that someone got hurt up on top of that building, and uh, you know, we know we have an existing violation. And, uh, you know, we didn't think it was important, uh, you know, particularly once we publicly discussed it. The, the code violation is, is probably the only one to me that seems like an urgent need that can't be put off for the next budget year or, or that just is not appropriate for the spending of this money like one-time events. I just, I just can't go along with that. I mean, even the door at the Cape Cottage Fire Station, I, I mean, I, we have quite a number of fire trucks. I think we talked even at the budget time that there's another fire truck that could fit into this fire station if, you know, we really wanted to save the money and that it is not necessary to have that fire truck there and have the door widened. Um, well, to bring some direction to where we're going here. Um, Before you bring direction, does your turn. Well, the hour is late. I will take my turn for just a moment. Okay. Um, as counselors Swift Kayata and Lynch are prone to say from time to time, <laughs> I know how to count to four. 
and the votes are in. And my vote at this point is really inconsequential in the total outcome. Um, and I'm not going to take a lot of time at five minutes till 11 giving the details for my position. However, um, I would support a contribution to the land trust. Um, I would not support it at $70,000. Um, as Councillor Councillor Lynch said, um, you know, absent extenuating circumstances, we should honor our 2004 financial uh, finance committee recommendation. Um, my feeling is that there are extenuating circumstances that have intervened between then and now, and those in, those extenuating circumstances were Pulaski um, and the council's commitment to ensure that expenditures do not increase beyond uh, the CPI. Um, in other words, I think we sent a message to the town that we expected that everybody would be tightening their belt. Um, town departments, school department, um, and I think that, um, you know, that belt, night, belt tightening, you know, would extend to whatever commitment um, we might have been contemplating making to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. But looking at the uh, town manager's list, I was prepared and am prepared to support a commitment of the $40,000 uh, to the Land Trust. And, you know, I won't go over all the list um, of reasons, but I will say this, that, you know, People talk about money can be spent on road repairs, it can fill potholes, it can do all sorts of things, and that's true. I mean, I recognize that a dollar spent on one thing is a dollar that's not available for something else. But, you know, we can have the best roads in the state of Maine, but I don't know that there's anybody in the town of Cape Elizabeth who is a citizen here who wants to drive down perfect roads past subdivision after, after subdivision. Um, the people of this town have made it very clear that they value the rural character, they value the open space, they value the farms that remain, and to me the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust seems to be the perfect partnering agent to ensure that those characteristics of the town that people value remain in perpetuity. Um, and I would have liked to have seen the council support it uh, for that reason. But it's probably enough said on that. So let's move on to how we are going to spend our dollars. Mr. Chairman, um, a point of order, please. At what point um, would any of the public be able to respond to some of these comments since there have been a lot of misstatements and misconceptions that should be clarified? At this point, we are not in a public hearing. Uh, we are in a what finance... You when, you re when you reconvene as a council, that would be able to make a comment? Well, that may not even be a public hearing for an opportunity to um, respond. I guess I could leave that up to our council chair. Right. In the past, the council chair has had that option to open up a question for public comment, even though it wasn't specifically a public hearing. So that is what... And, and, and understand that we are not at this point formally voting on anything. When we're done with this discussion to get a consensus, the finance committee meeting will conclude and we will reconvene as the town council and we'll actually vote on a commitment of funds. If I might, I, I think it would be appropriate for people who have stayed here until 11 o'clock and if they are willing to make some comments, um, it, it, I think it would be appropriate when we reconvene the council. Council Moore. So, move this along. What are we going to do with that $50,000 on the first item? Should we just go item by item and hold the well, let's, I'd say let's go down the list and get a sense of what we have consensus on. Um, the first two items we already have a consensus on. We may not have unanimity on them, but we seem to have a consensus on the 75000 for property tax relief and $9,000 for legal and other um, expenses. Um, let's just go down the list. Um, replace temperature 
and humidity control unit. For we, why don't we just handle the big item first? The big item? Yeah, that's the next item. Item three there. I'm sorry, what big item? The one that says land acquisition. Well, I, 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 I sense that we've already covered the land well, acquisition. But what, what do we do with it? My, my question. My, I'd, I'd like to have an opportunity to make a suggestion on what we do with the money. Council uh, Well, I, I thought you were asking about process, and my, my suggestion for the process would be. I mean, we can go through these items as. Um, our chair is suggesting, but I thought you were asking about the land acquisition item, and my hope was that when we get back into the town council meeting, that we would vote on property tax relief, the 75,000 one that we apparently have consensus on, the legal expenses, the donation to the land trust, which would involve removing item number 44 from the table. That's the one that kept getting tabled and tabled and tabled. It, it was donation to the land, land trust, um, remove it from the table, vote on that one, um, and then just go through the rest of the recommendations, this list, Mike's list, and vote up or down on those, and then last, seeing what we may or may not have left over for funds, deal with any, whether we should make any allocation of the council Ms. Henning's idea of a fund, and I, I hope not to be misrepresenting you, a fund to be used for either acquisition acquisition and or maintenance of capital assets. Is that what I was? Yeah, I just I, called so it. My only concern with calling it the comprehensive planning fund is I think it's gonna confuse people who, who think of the comprehensive plan and the comprehensive planning committee. I think we may come up with a different name for you it. You have but the gist of it, precisely. I just wanted it more, to be more broad than just acquisition. That's, all. that's what I was hoping we could do process-wise. Yeah. And I can support that I, as well. I, I'd say, yeah, uh, we can skip over that no. item and move on to the others, and whatever we have left over at the end, mm -hmm. we'll come back and talk about it again. And in my sense, is and now it's based in part on the most recent comments made by our town manager is that whatever we have left over i mean we still have the full budget process ahead of us uh, we're going to have ample time to commit any remaining dollars within fiscal year 05 before we get to any perceived problem with those dollars being tied up in 06. So I would think that we're, we shouldn't feel under any pressure to spend the dollars tonight. That's correct. As opposed to holding them over to any other meeting that we might be having the between council, now and the council this can decide year. to spend them or not spend them. If, if we decide not to spend on any particular item that's brought up, um, we can come back to that as we usually do sort of towards the end of the fiscal year. You know, we can come back to any other item that we haven't decided on um, in the coming month in, of fiscal 05 if we want to use 05 dollars or if we decide we just don't think it's a priority, then it's not a priority. So maybe the most efficient way to go from here, again, I keep looking at the clock recognizing that it's late, it's late. Um, would be to bring the finance committee meeting to a close. Go back to the town council, go down these items one at a time, vote them up or down. Whatever gets voted down, the dollars will roll over to some other meeting, some other time this fiscal year for us to consider how to spend it or not spend it. Council Mull. Would you agree that we have an opportunity to discuss each item as we go down the list as opposed to just straight up and down the list? I would hope briefly, given the briefly. limits of the hour, but yeah. I think most of these folks are waiting to hear about the land acquisition slash land trust item. So then it would just be ourselves we were keeping up on the other one. I mean, anybody can stay who wants to hear about any of the items. But if, just, if I might, there are a lot of folks here as well on issues other than the land acquisition. I noticed library trustees. I noticed a, a very good contingent from the uh, fire department, system. and I also know a lot of department heads who. Uh, have issues and concerns. I'm, I'm not as well. trying so to I, say. I think at least half ahead. the group here is not land trust related, so I, I wouldn't want them to think that you're just going to limit 
No, 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 no. I'm not going to. Limit, I'm not going to limit discussion. I'm just trying to be sensitive to the fact that many, a number of people here are interested in the land trust donation issue, and so I would foresee doing that towards the beginning of the list. Seems like a good process. So, with that, could I have a I move motion to adjourn, to adjourn the finance committee meeting? Second. All those in favor? We are adjourned and do as I a finance committee meeting. And do I hear a motion to reconvene as the... So moved. Second. All those in favor of reconvening the meeting of the town council? She gets to say something. <laughs> I have been deposed. I want to thank Councillor Backer for his uh, running of the Finance Committee meeting. It was a tricky meeting and did a good job. I want to thank everyone's patience. I know it's been a long evening for everyone. Um, we are reconvened as a town council. We are on item number 91. And I'll make sure I got my list here. Um, what I would like to suggest just to recap is that we decide if at all possible on these items and I'd like to do them in the following order if it's okay with you guys with the, my fellow counselors <laughs> sorry getting a little informal property tax relief issue at 75,000 the legal et cetera sales expenses at 9,000 then go on to the donation to the land trust issue which it which we will involve us removing item number 44 from the table um, and then go on to Mike's other recommendations. I know there are people from the fire department and other departments here and go through those. Okay, okay. procedural stuff. Uh, and then last, do Councillor McKinney's uh, idea. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, do I... Hear a motion. I'll move. I'll make a motion that we uh, for the property tax provide relief. Provide seventy-five thousand dollars for property tax relief and nine thousand dollars for legal and other expenses. Can we Second. do? Sorry. I'm sorry. Wondering if we could do that. Set those two items separately. Okay. You want to okay. amend your motion? I, okay. I amend the motion to provide property tax relief in the amount of seventy-five thousand dollars for the fiscal two thousand. Okay, to use the proceeds from the lot for that, for 75000 It's been moved. Is there a second for that? Second. Second. Discussion? I second to the first one. Do I need to be asked if I would modify my second? Will, yes. you, will you modify your second? Okay. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion on this one? I hope we've got consensus. All in favor? Please indicate all in favor. It's unanimous for that one. Okay. We make a motion that we use $9,000 for legal and other expenses from the proceeds of the sale of the property. Okay. It's been moved. Is there a second on that one? Second. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion on this one? Councilor Lynch. I have a question for the manager. Um, I guess I'd like to know what's left in our budget line at this point in the year for legal and other expenses and my question is do we really need at this point to replenish that line or is this something we can wait one of the budget cuts this past year was legal fees five thousand dollars assuming that we wouldn't do as much legal fees you know we're trying to make all these assumptions that everything's going to be rosy and perfect and uh you know right i don't know the exact amount but it, it was running you know including it was running over the average of of the expectation at this point and I am well aware of a number of time bombs out there in, in terms of legal legal issues uh, we've had a uh, we've had a number of issues the planning board has been busy uh, Trundy Point is rearing its head uh, Mr. Mack has been in a couple of different times and uh, there's a, there may be a proposal to build on Trundy Point so I uh, I, I think we need to make sure we have enough money to uh, deal with that. So, 
I'm still trying to figure out what money is left in that account. Would the chairman like me to go get the amount? Or I can't. No, if you don't want to answer, that's I just don't know the fine. exact amount. Okay. I'd, I'd have to go pick it up. I've been, I, I'll just say I have difficulty I know it's trending. appropriating more money midstream. There are, you know, how many hundreds of budget lines? And we're picking out two tonight. So I'll be voting against this one. Council Moore. I would just like to say that as many people do when they buy or sell a house, the legal fees usually come out of the proceeds of that activity. And I feel it's appropriate that the legal fees associated with this activity of selling the town lot be just paid for out of the sale of that town lot. I mean, it's you know pretty straightforward. Uh, and the less we use the town attorney, the better I feel. Any other discussion on this item? Ditto. Okay. Okay. All in favor of the using the nine thousand dollars for the to pay of the proceeds to pay for the legal and sales expenses. Five. Opposed. Uh, two. And at this time, I'd like to move that the request from the land trust for a grant for the Jordan Farm easement, which was item number 44 and was tabled um, a few months ago, be removed from the table. Is there a second? Go ahead. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? I think we're moving it from the table. Moving it from the table. What this is, oh, that's right. I'm sorry, we just to explain. Item number 44 was the item number for the donation to the land trust back originally numbered, I believe, in it was August. Uh, it was the number on the August agenda. It was postponed to September, tabled until September because the lot hadn't closed. Then in September, it was postponed to December because the lot hadn't closed. In December, um, the lot close inadvertently it was left off the agenda it would have had to be tabled anyways because of the timing of the closing um, so that's what councillor Lynch is, is proposing to do just a reminder to the council you've been considering item 91 for a long time if you wish to take up a, a new item after 11 o'clock under the council rules, it takes a two-thirds vote. Uh, you could still consider that action, though, within the context of 91. You could, you know, you can make whatever motion you want within the context of 91. But to take an item up that, that's uh, a new item uh, that is takes a two-thirds vote after 11 o'clock, according to the council rules. Well, how do we do that? well I will. Uh, just I, I'm happy to do it in the, the most efficacious 91. way possible. Just whatever motion with, within 91. So, with you the make. understanding that this is the continuation. I just want. I just wouldn't want, want someone to come back at the next meeting and say that the council rules were violated. And all I want to do is have a straight up or down vote on the land trust request. I'm helping you do that. Okay. Then, what do you want me to do? Make whatever motion you like. Well, I made one. Do I need to withdraw within, it? Within the, within the context of item 91. Okay. Well, within the context of item 91, I move that we grant the um, Cape Elizabeth Land Trust a grant of $40,000 in recognition of the Jordan Farm easement purchase. It's been moved. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. And I would just like to speak to that for a moment. I can count to four. I can count to three. That's why I've moved to 40,000. And uh, I just think, again, that we are so fortunate to have the land trust and its flexibility. Because I guarantee you, with all of the budget issues before us, there will be zero in the town's land trust acquisition amount next year at this time or five years from this time and there will be some other unique parcel that will come up and we as a as a municipal government will be unable to act in the time frame and the land trust will and so i think it's a sad state of affairs that we've gotten to now where we're penalizing the land trust for having acted um, quickly and not come to us last march and said 
too bad, too sad. You didn't act until we let this go. So that's all I'll say. I'm going to allow brief discussion of this because I really would encourage us all not to go into our whole full-blown speeches again. Councillor Moles, I saw you first. And the hour is the late. End. The hour is late and I've been consistent on how I feel on this since before we put the lot up for sale. When we put the lot up for sale, I strictly viewed it as a way of tax relief, taking the monies and spending them on things that we'd have to raise tax dollars for otherwise to do. My, my view is consistent on this item since day one. Um, but what I, what I wanted to speak to was, and this is it's up to you as Madam Chairwoman of our council, we don't usually let the public speak on items that the council is discussing. But we have had a lot of people sit here throughout the course of the evening. I'm not trying to prolong our evening, but I would ask when the councilors are done speaking, especially in some of these hot issues, that you might give them a very brief opportunity to come to the podium and, and say their piece. We, we really appreciate when the public comes down to the meeting. A lot of people watch at home, but it's a very lonely night here some nights when it's just us and the press. No offense, Gareth, but, you know, when it's just us and, and Gareth sitting here, it's rather lonely and we want people to come to our meetings. So that's and Ian. my Okay, thank you. Um, someone down here was waving a hand. Yeah, I just had a um, comment. I, I support the land trust and I support what they're doing, but the issue, and what, what I'm trying to do is come up with a, a position that supports the intent but doesn't hand over the money until there's an actual specific need for that money. And I, I just think that's an appropriate use of the public funds. And that's why I'm suggesting that we create a separate fund. We protect that money so that it is available. And I understand, Mary, what happens to money, believe me. When you've been through the budget cycle. Okay, councillors, councillors, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, right. we really. That's just, that's just the. I, I think we've, we have pretty much said it all at this point. I don't mean to cut off. Well, but I, I'd just like to comment that if, if we do not take our partnership share here and reimburse the land trust for when we should have taken our role, they will not be able to act because they will not have any money. And we will not be able to act because I think it's a good idea, maybe this comprehensive uh, fund idea, but if it's so general that it's for any, any capital proposal, like I, I forget exactly what you said, it's going to be rated, and, and when open space comes available and you have to act quickly, there's going to be nobody to act. And we will not be able to go after the grant that, that the land trust has been able to get. And, and I don't think we will be looked at, I mean, many of these grants require a match from a town, and um, we, will, we have not matched that, the grant. Uh, that, that they got the application for. So I think we have fallen back on that. But they will not have any money if we have take, they have taken all the stewardship money and put it toward a purchase. They have neither money. Councilor Roberts. I'd like to get a, I have a couple of comments before I cut the leave. And I may have to wait before we get to a vote on this thing, it appears. Um, you knew what my position was. I like the idea that, uh, that Paul came up with. If there's money that's not voted in on some of these items, I would be put it in our own land acquisition fund so we can act. And the land trust system can actually take the public funds from the citizenry, from the citizenry so that, you know, they, they have the capability to raise those funds to, to meet these needs in the future. If we don't put some money in it now, we're not going to be partnering with anybody down the future. Thank you, Councilor Roberts. And I, I do want to be you. sensitive to Councilor Roberts's back, I think, is probably bothering him, and I would like him to be able to participate in this vote. However, I also understand uh, um, and appreciate Councillor Moles's suggestion. Um, I do not, this is not a public hearing. Uh, no public hearing was scheduled for tonight on this matter. And so I, I 
want to be careful that we don't turn it into a quasi-public hearing where we have a long line of people. The, um, Mrs. Coggeshall has already spoken at the beginning of the evening. If someone from the land trust would like to speak, if it's, I, I want to sort of get sense from nodding from the rest of the councilors. It, my idea would be if someone from the land trust would like to speak briefly for two or three minutes at the podium so we can hear once again from them for a, you know, I don't want to stifle public debate, but I also think there has been much opportunity this evening for discussion. I know the land trust um, sent out an email yesterday and, and we have been receiving plenty of input from um, land trust members. So I don't want to cut it, but I also don't want to lose Councillor Roberts here by having a long line of people come up to speak. I'd like this vote to take place to put everyone, to give closure to everyone. So how, how who, who is interested, just look at me, I'm not asking for a formal vote. Who would like to have someone from the land trust come up and, and speak just for two or three minutes? I just wouldn't want it to limit it to the land. Or, well, I yeah. If there are other people yes, here. Yes, I, I sort of mean. I don't think we should be unfair about that. That's, that's an excellent, excellent suggestion. One, one representative from the land trust, and if there's anybody else who wants to speak on some opposing viewpoint, I don't, I don't mean to cut it off, but I'm just trying to make sure we don't get the line. I don't know how many people are even here from the land trust. I don't know who's here on which issue. Councilor Backer, are you looking to... Well, I would like to say something. I promise 45 seconds maximum. <laughs> okay. To I've got my Council camera ready to fling. <laughs> Two things. One, it seems to me disingenuous for the town to have to be rejoicing in the fact that we got one point, a million one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars from state and federal sources, funds which undoubtedly originated with tax dollars of one kind or another and not be willing to commit some small portion of our own tax dollars to the same cause. Second, this notion that we should create our own, ta our own land acquisition fund seems silly to me. There, we've got a private, quasi-private group that does it very efficiently. We are not going to be able to do it as efficiently. Why reinvent the wheel? This is a perfect example of something that government shouldn't be getting involved in when we've got a private sector group doing it very well. Thank you. And we will be able to deal with whether to set up our own fund a little farther along in the list. Is there someone, this is not a public hearing, but if there was someone, I assume Chris, <laughs> if there's someone from the land trust who would like to come up and speak briefly, please limit your remarks to two to three minutes. Hello. Respectful, I'm respectfully Thank you, Madam requesting. Chairman. Uh, Councilors, uh, McKinney, welcome to the council. Chris Franklin, I live at 130 Oakhurst Road and I'm the Executive Director of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. I've had the opportunity to speak with you and to email back and forth with you on this issue for, for some months now. Um, we certainly appreciate being a partner in land conservation with the town of Cape Elizabeth. This project has been uh, near and dear to our heart because <clears throat> we align our priorities with the comprehensive planning and with the priorities of our members and uh, the 400 members of the land trust in town who, who have supported this project very generously. Um, our ability to get more grants, like the one that we got from the Land for Maine's Future and from the United States Department of Agriculture, that's over a million dollars in grants, will not happen again if we do not have town participation. We have basically been told this explicitly that that is essential that the town show financial commitment to these projects. <clears throat> One uh, characterization that I'd like to speak to is that this is a charitable contribution to our organization. And I see that as the very far from the truth. We did not qualify for a bank loan. We do not have enough assets other than our land to which we could put up as collateral. If we did, we, we would. Our lands can't be developed. <laughs> They're not worth that much money. Mm -hmm. All of our lands have very little value. Even Robinson Woods, <coughs> 80 acres of forest on Shore Road, is, has a value of about $80,000. So mm -hmm. 
So there's not a lot of money there for us to borrow on. So we borrowed from our board of directors and we borrowed from our stewardship account. The stewardship account is a dedicated, for a dedicated fund for stewardship. And if you're worried about where that money is going to go if you give it to us, it's going straight back into stewardship because that's what it's dedicated for. And it's there to take care of places like the town farm, to take care of the 560 acres that we have. It's there to pay legal expenses on our land. And it's there to pay taxes to the town of Cape Elizabeth, which we do voluntarily on the lands that we own. So as a nonprofit organization, we do that because we understand that as a landowner, as a landowner in Cape Elizabeth, we want to contribute our fair share because we recognize that everyone should do so. In tight budget times, <coughs> organizations and municipalities need to partner. Cape Play, the Playground in Fort William, the uh, Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, organizations such as these play a vital role in our community by allowing municipalities to reach higher levels they would not be able to reach by themselves. It's only through these partnerships in shrinking budget times that we're going to make ends meet, is if private organizations go out there and get the money to get these done. We have raised 95% of the money for this project. Bill Jordan, <coughs> who dedicated some decades of his life to service to this town, gave up $500,000 worth of value on his land. It was appraised at $1.8 million, and he wanted to put it into preservation not into condos and into 12 houses over the marsh. And we wanted to see that happen. The town wanted to see that happen. We raised 95% of that money, and not a dime of it ended up in our bank account. It all went to that project. None of it ended up with people of the land trust. So I just really hope that this isn't characterized as a donation to rebuild our kitty to as a charitable donation to an organization to do with whatever it wants without oversight, because that money is dedicated towards stewardship. The only reason, I mean, would it be different if that were a bank loan that was outstanding rather than a loan to our stewardship fund? It probably would. You'd look at that and say, that's a real debt that this organization has to pay. But because we borrowed it from ourselves, because we didn't qualify for a bank loan, we're getting penalized. So I'll just leave it with that. that so obviously, you know, I did, did just have a show of hands from the land trust members and, for, and uh, directors here. You know, we've been here all night. <clears throat> we've been doing this for a year and a half. And we've gone through the motions, and uh, you know, we understand it's, it's tight times, and we appreciate you listening to us, and we hope to partner with you in the future. But um, this is going to hurt our ability to get funds from the state and federal government. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay, I'd like to move the question. I'd like to move the question. Uh, counselors? Counselors, I'd like to move the question, please. Uh, please, oh. can I make one comment? 30 well, seconds. 30 didn't, seconds, please. Didn't, didn't you say, did you ask if anyone on oh, the opposite I'm, side was going to come up? I'm sorry, is there anybody on, the, on another side of the issue who would like to come up and speak? Okay. Thank you very much. So my, Thank I you. would I would like to make an amendment to the motion. The motion was to donate forty thousand dollars to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. Uh, I would like to amend that to twenty thousand dollars. Is there a second? Motion fails for lack of a second. I'd like to move the original motion, which is to make a donation from the proceeds of the lot next door to a donation to the land trust in the amount of 40000 All those in favor of making that donation? I think we're moving the question. I think it's late. All those in favor of donating the 40000 One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, opposed. <laughs> opposed. Thank you. It um, passes 4-3. Um, we will move on. If anybody wants, I don't know who wants to might maybe leave, but um, take a moment if you want to leave. Um, Michael's 
Mike McGovern's other recommendation. <clears throat> Do I hear I any motions on any of those? Motion that, uh, you want to start with one? Or? Why don't we just go through them separately because I don't think we have consensus. For the, well, do we have consensus for moving all 99,000 worth of them at once? Well, I, don't I, would, I don't think I would we do. I would second that. To, to move all 99,000 at once? Was there a motion to move all 99,000 at once? I would make a motion for that. I would second that motion. Okay. Any discussion on that? Well, all in favor of... I'm opposed to moving them all at once. I think we should discuss them. I think they're... Of, even the manager had three tiers of needs. And again, I'm very concerned about this rush to spend money because we have a, an expenditure cap. And what we're doing is we're trying to get around the expenditure cap. And I really think if we're going to do that, we should invite the school board in to share the wealth. So, um, you know, let's go on the record one by one. Okay. But that's my view. Do you want to all vote it? I'll just vote against it. So is there any other discussion on this? I, I agree. I, I will vote against it if it's okay. Okay. All in favor of dealing with all 99,000, all the items at once? Uh, well, all four. Okay. Uh, opposed? Three. Three. So is there a motion to do something with all nine. Uh, I mean, all, I should probably read the list. Community control for 20,000, family fund for 9,000, re-collaborating town hall for 16, library painting 15,000, fire door repairs 12,000, comprehensive planning committee 12,000, voter mailing 6,000, rental unit Fort Williams um, 9,000. So all that totals to 99,000. So do I hear a motion? about those well, all 99? That's what I, that's what I, I thought that was. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the motion, the motion was to consider, one consider the block. them all in no, I, I the had, block. Well, okay. If so do you want to make a motion too? Yes, ma'am. I uh, make a motion that we provide $99,000 to um, fund these items that have been identified by the town manager. Okay. Just Is there a second? I'll second that motion. And I'd I'd like to ask if a councilor has a particular item that they are vehemently opposed to, that maybe we get that out on the floor and then just amend the motion to get rid of that one or two items. So are you amending? No, I'm just seconding. I would okay. like to propose an amendment to remove the voter mailings and public information items. Second. Second. Okay. So. It's been, <laughs> we've got to keep track of these amendments here. We have before us an <coughs> amendment to the motion to remove the, which one was it? Voter the mailing. voter mailing. Voter mailing, um, which would, in essence, leave everything except the voter mailing. So but all in. One amendment. Okay. I'll be making one. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you, are you sure it wouldn't be simpler to deal with these one at a time rather than subtracting? Okay, okay. I think it would be. I would three. There might be enough votes to uh, pass the whole 99,000. I think there is. Just vote on it. Okay. Um, I can't call for the vote. But well, there was a okay. request to amend our motion, and I don't want to amend the motion. So are you withdrawing the amendment? Well, uh, it's my amendment. <laughs> I'm trying was to there figure out what's going on here. There, there has not been a second yet. I thought to, was it well, I, I seconded it because I thought we were doing something different. So do you want to Even withdraw your second? Even though I thought seconds? originally we were voting on all 99. So do you want to withdraw I your second? I will withdraw my second. Okay. The, the, that amendment fails for lack of a second. Now, the motion on the floor is? To consider to vote for, not to consider them at once, but to vote for all 99,000 at once. That is the motion that's on the floor. Now, can we speak to that motion? Yes. I will be opposing that motion because the town manager his, himself said he did not feel the need to fund um, the collaborating of town hall right away. 
um, the Comprehensive Planning Committee, while I think it's important, is an FY05, I'm sorry, FY06 budget item. The, um, I support doing the work at the Cape Cod Station. It seems to me it's the only thing that's compelling enough to take out of the budget cycle. And finally, if we're doing some backdoor and runs around our spending cap, then I really think we ought to invite the school in and share the wealth. That's my final objection to this approach. Okay, are there other comments? I will be opposing dealing with them all nine at once because I would like to deal with them separately. Okay. I already voted four to three oh. to deal with them all right. once. No, I, I was informed that I misunderstood. We voted four to three. Well, whatever. Okay. So. so what do we do? What do, so we do we have a chance to vote or do we have to, you want to? We voted so to do them all at let's, once. Let's, let's, let's go to the clerk. And we'll go back. Let's go to the clerk. We voted to deal with all of them at once, four to three. Yeah. So now we have a vote to vote on the 99,000 to approve. Yes. Yeah. All. Yeah. And I, okay. So, any other comments on approving all 99,000 at once? Okay, then let's move the question of approving all 99,000. All in favor? One, two. Opposed. Okay. Uh, I'm very Two to five. So can we, we can, however, make separate motions. Are you leaving that note for the record, Jake? Um, here, here we go. Yeah. Do I hear? Anything? I would like to move. The door work at the fire, approval of the $12,000 for the door work at the Cape Cottage Fire Station so we can get the new big $300,000 truck in and out without <coughs> causing damage to either the building or the truck. Second. It's been moved and seconded to spend $12,000 on the fire door repair. Any discussion? All in favor? One, two, Three, four, five. Opposed? One. That and that was Carol. Okay, do I hear any other motions about any of these others? I move that we commit to spending $9,000 to repair the rental units at Fort Williams. Then moved Second. and seconded to spend $9,000 to repair the rental units at Fort Williams. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of spending that? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's unanimous. Six zero. Do I hear any other motions on any of these other items? I would like to move that we spend nine thousand dollars to uh, fund Family Fun Day. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded to spend $9,000, I feel like I'm repeating, <laughs> to spend $9,000 on Family Fun Day. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I think Family Fun Day is a very nice thing, but, I, you know, last year I think we did not fund it, and we raised some money to hold it, and, and I just don't think that's a critical thing at that, this time. We, It's a budget process. Any other? Mike? Last year we did not fund it, but we used funds that had been carried over from the year before. Town fund. Any other comments on Family Fun Day? Yes? No? No, I think I made my comments earlier. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, all in favor of spending $9,000 of the, of the lot proceeds to fund Family Fun Day? All in favor? One, two, um, opposed, here, opposed, four, um, okay, any uh, other motions on humidity control, the re the library painting, the comprehensive planning committee, voter mailings? 
Well, we got last. Which item we're going to uh, we're going to do one by one. Well, well yeah, okay. just I make reminding sure. people what's left on the list. Yes. Okay. We'll go. I'll go in order the the manager's order here. I think it made a lot of sense to me. Um, I'm I make a motion to uh, okay. use just, just one at a time, sir. The so voter mailing, six thousand dollars. To spend six thousand dollars on voter mailing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to spend six thousand dollars on the voter mailing. Any discussion? <coughs> We've already spent the money. It's going to be paid for somewhere, whether it's paid out of this money, which is now back in the general fund, or it's paid out of some other fund. It really doesn't matter. So, <laughs> might as well just pay it. It's, it, it does. It does matter, Michael. There are hundreds of lines in the budget. We don't stop mid-year and start to look selectively at this line and that line. We never have before. When we come to <laughs> June 30th, the end of the fiscal, fiscal year, there will be a number of lines that are overspent. There will be a number of lines that are underspent. We're fortunate that we have an extremely capable town manager, and he generally comes in within budget. But we don't pick out single items out of these hundreds and say, we've never done it before. You know, it's, it's not a good way to do business. So anyway. the, the manager would like to speak to this. I spoke earlier indicating that we shouldn't be giving money to a 501c3, a charitable organization. It is a charitable organization. Last I knew, it's still a 501c3. I don't know why we claim that it isn't. Uh, without the town paying its own bills. The council authorized me, you know, I couldn't, the earlier vote, and pardon me, but, you know, when two councilors vote against closing costs for property they authorized to have sold and then won't give us any money to do it, I have trouble understanding that. I have trouble understanding when we authorize the voter mailing, we authorize the expenditure of taxpayer dollars to do it, and then suddenly we say, no, go find the money elsewhere. The council has had reports on heating oil and motor fuels where the accounts could be as much as $100,000 over the expenditure. Uh, the charter does have provisions in terms of when the manager can bring matters to the council and when they can be overspent. There is no authorization at this time for the manager to, to overspend fees, you know, legal fees, public information. And in fact, you know, part of that table, we could, we could have to have an emergency council meeting at some point just to simply authorize the payroll for cable or an ad for newspapers. I don't bring these things to you lightly. I don't bring them to you, you know, be, just because I want the money. I bring to you with the professional experience of trying to be fiscally responsible and trying to make this government run right. You know, we were once the one of the proudest communities in the state and one of the most fiscally responsible, one of the ones best recognized for schools, and we're down to the level of saying, let's not pay for something we all already authorized and something we already did. I don't like the direction, and I think we need to be fiscally responsible. Everything is well, the money will be there, the manager will take care of it. What the manager is telling you is the manager for years and years has tried to do this, has tried to offer things on a string. All the benchmarks show that we're the lowest cost in most every area. The reason we do that is because the department heads and all the employees are always willing to go forward. The volunteers are always doing it. We always try to find a way to do something. I put in, although I was against it, $40,000 for the land trust in this recommended motion. I found that. When I hear, you know, I think manipulation of my view that something was, you know, I didn't want it because it was on the bottom of my list. My list had 150 things on it. I brought nine to the council. And, you know, I, I just get irritated with the attitude that the town manager can find money for everything. When we have caps every year, when two, two years ago we had 2%, you know, to get to the point, it just isn't possible. I deal every day with employees out sick, we don't have any personnel. I deal with issues of, you know, the roads still need to be plowed. All of these things still need to be do, done. The bills need to be paid. 
And when the council begins to authorize expenditures, begins to authorize closings, and then says, you can't have the money, something is not right. And I, I, I apologize for the tone of my voice, uh, but I, I feel strongly in the need for fiscal responsibility. And, you know, for those that wanted the land trust, fine. It was on my list. I tried to work. I tried to find common ground. And I'm just very, very disappointed that the council has authorized things. And, you know, the council, I hear Carol, we disagree. You know, South Portland, we don't need to fix this fire station. Let's look at South Portland. I looked at the plans. It's $500,000 to add the addition onto Willard to provide for merging with South Portland. You know, these things all cost money. And, you know, somehow we're not going to spend 12. That thing's at least five years down there. We've got to deal with the reality of everything that's expected by citizens, of meeting all the, the mandates. And everyone seems to think we're going to save all this money. I'm on my soapbox now. We're going <laughs> to save all this money regionally. We're going to do all this stuff. And, you know, but after a while, it just isn't possible. You know, it's, it's good the land trust is going to get it. I know that they'll do fine things with it. But, you know, we still need to run a municipal government. We still need to help the schools. I mean, it's amazing to me, is, you know, the thing I didn't read it up the chamber, the thousands of things we're accomplishing with almost nothing. Michael, I have and, and now we won't pay the bill for a voter information thing we authorized, or, or there's some that don't want it. And I, I want you to know that I have difficulty accepting it. I, have, I appreciate all that you've said very much, Michael, and I truly believe that we are very fortunate to have you and all our municipal employees. But you raise a very good point. When you say we are running $100,000 over in our oil account, then I say, well, then why aren't we taking the extra money and funding our oil account? All I'm saying is we've, we've got one little item here and one little item there. And if we're going to do this, we ought to really do it. I mean, I, I, I'm perplexed why we're looking to refill one $6,000 account. If indeed there's a hundred thousand dollars that we're going to go over on oil, let's take all the money before we start spending it on family fun day and this and that. The, the reason is, Marianne, the oil account. because the oil account is spread over about twenty different accounts. The public information is one account that is much smaller, well, and that you, you you can't try to try to deal with. I would sooner vote you a hundred thousand dollars for the increased cost of oil that makes more financial sense to me but okay I, i'm going to exert my prerogative as chair to make a short comment which is i will be uh supporting this one because we did not plan for it way back in the planning process to spend six thousand dollars on voter mailings but we did tell the manager he, to do it at least i remember telling him to do it so uh, i think it's only fair that we fund it now that we have the money so i'd like to move the question all of those uh, in favor of spending $6,000 on the voter mailing? One, two, three, four, yes. And opposed? Carol and Marianne, thank you. Okay. okay. Um, another one. motion? Yes, ma'am. I uh, make a motion that we spend $15,000 for library painting and building repair. Is there, okay. is there a second? Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion on this motion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all those in favor of spending <laughs> $15,000 on the library painting and repair? Four, yes. And no, Carol and Marianne. Thank you. I make a motion that we spend twenty thousand dollars to replace the temperature humidity control unit for historic records. Second. It's been moved and seconded to um, spend twenty thousand dollars on the humidity control uh, unit. Um, is there discussion? Just one comment that once these records are destroyed, you don't get them back. Any other comments, David? I agree with Councilor McKinney. I think that we are remiss in our duties as town councilors if we do not preserve the historic records of this town for future generations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments? I'll, I'll just Lynch. make a comment. I appreciate the importance of that. 
but we're a month away from getting our budget and getting all the other important requests. So uh, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but I want to see what else will be asked of us in a month and what else will be asked by the school department before I vote for this. Other comments? I, I would comment that I consider, I, I mentioned earlier this evening that I think it's appropriate to use uh, the proceeds from the lot on capital needs, and I consider this a type of capital needs. I think this is a critical asset of the town of Cape Elizabeth, and we need to preserve it. So I think it's appropriate use of the money. All those in favor of spending the $20,000 on the humidity control unit? One, two, three, four. Yes and no. Carol and Marianne, thank you. And I, I just, I really have to comment that I am uh, devoted to protecting our historic records. Um, I mean, I think it's really, really important. But as I recall in our budget process, we chose to do something else. And I, I don't recall what it was, but something that seemed much less important to me than preserving the historic records. And that was um, something that the trustees recommended. And I feel very strongly we should have spent the money in the, in the budget on, on that. Okay. If, if I might, if everyone will recall, regional waste systems went up to $120,000, mm -hmm. and we had to cut the budget you know, last minute. It wasn't budgeted, and we had to find everywhere we could to cut the budget in order to fund the increase in the regional waste system bill, because we had to live within the cap. And I, I know I keep hearing yeah. a digs about uh, regional uh, waste, waste system bill, but you know we've also increased in population and we have more trash. So that's, we have more tons and that's why the bill goes up as well. Okay. I would like to make a motion <clears throat> that we uh, spend $16,000 reclapboarding the rear of the town hall. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to spend $16,000 to put the reclabbered the back of town hall. Is there discussion? Mike. I know that Councilor Lynch said a little while ago that the town manager uh, may or may not have said that it wasn't his highest priority, but I, I think what sways me is, as he just said, we had 150 items. These are the top items of those 150, and if the town manager put it on the list, including Family Fun Day, I think that they're worth doing. Any other comments? All those in favor of spending 16000 to re clabbered the back of Town Hall? One, two, three, four. Four yes. Opposed? Marianne and Carol. And I, I make a motion that we spend $12,000 to establish a comprehensive planning committee. Is there a second? I said comprehensive planning committee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is Mike's item, not your item. Not I'll second, second it so we can discuss it. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? I think that the, uh, the essence of uh, comprehensive planning is um, one of the most important things we can do as a council. It sets the, um, you know, it lays out the map of the future. And without a, a good comprehensive plan that's up to date, what you end up with is a haphazard government that makes decisions on a, a short term, uh, with a short term vision. Other comments, Carol? I just, I think we have a comprehensive plan that serves us just fine right now. I think that this item should go into the next budget year and consider it at that time. Okay, other comments, Mike? I'm not gonna go into a long speech about why we need a new comprehensive plan because I believe we do. I believe the plan that we have is, is out of date and it's pushing the town not the direction that maybe the residents want to go. But I, I was, as much as what I just said about the manager putting items, important items on the list, 
I, I am swayed by Councillor Lynch's uh, very coherent suggestion that this is really a fiscal 06 item, and uh, I would support it in the fiscal 06 budget, uh, but it's not something that we need to do between now and June 3rd. Other comments, discussion? I think if uh, we have money available um, and we need to do this, I think it would be better to do it now than later. Based on what I've been reading from the state government and what's going to happen, is uh, we're going to have a very tight budget and it's going to be hard to make decisions and this is the sort of thing that's going to be put off, in my opinion. Mike? With all respect to Councillor McKinney's position, this money would be going to form a comprehensive plan committee that could take how many years to develop an answer? It really wouldn't be of any help in this particular budget cycle. Sure. It, it, you know, whether it starts now or July 1st, it'll be some time before we get a response back from them. And you just spent the $40,000 that we would have put into the fund for the comprehensive plan. So oh. I, I'm, for that reason, I'm gonna push it to the 06 budget. Okay, I can understand that. And that 40,000, um, the reason I, I changed my uh, vote on that was really because of the argument that was the stewardship fund and that was the missing piece for me, is that it had a purpose other than just replenishing resources. It had, you know, legal costs and taxes and so forth. I understand those things, and that, that's what swayed me. And, anyway. and like you, I was swayed and offered 20,000, <coughs> not 40. Okay. I move the question. Thank you, but I think just the Very quickly, wants just a reminder as we're preparing the 06 budget, in addition to all the caps, we have an unfunded traffic light that's part of the planning board approval and Dunkin Donuts is not going to pay for the whole bill and there's all these issues out there there's the fact that our interest the capital part of the budget is one half the level that it is that it was cut this past year last minute 70,000 below the year it is and it when you're already the lowest benchmark community and you have the same caps as all the other communities and you're starting with a much lower base and you've deferred all sorts of projects, all sorts of things, when you're not anywhere near spending what you want, unless you use a, a special resource like this, it will be within those caps, and you know everything just becomes that much tighter. And uh, you know, you, you just you just narrow you narrowing your decision making window all the time. And you know, Mary Ann said a couple of times we need to bring in the schools. Well, we, we met with the schools and the council adopted a resolution back, I think, in August to, to fund, if there's no money left in the school project, that traffic light. The schools have been very clear that they're not prepared at this point to offer any money. Uh, so we need to come up somehow through various places about $200,000 for, for that traffic light. You know, it, it's a challenge. Uh, you know, there's so much we want to do. Uh, the comprehensive plan uh, is something we've been talking about for a couple of years. Uh, most of, a lot of it's been implemented. It's, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful thing. If we don't, you know, uh, Maureen's prepared to begin the process now in terms of, it was, we're hoping to meet with the boards and commissions at the orientation at the end of the month to begin to talk about that process. It's on the draft agenda that uh, the chairman of the appointments committee planned. Uh, if you don't fund it to July, then it's six months later that we're going to be doing that and everything, yeah, and it, we don't need all the money at once. That's absolutely true. It is extended over time, but based on my earlier comments, I'm reluctant to set up new committees to, to do anything without council financing of the backup because I'm beginning to wonder if we, you know, we're gonna authorize something and we don't put the money with it. So, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of talk about believing in comprehensive plan and we've done an awful lot of things lately that are, that are borderline as to whether or not that they're in compliance with the comprehensive plan. I really think it's time for the community to look at that because that's the way you order all the priorities of the town. It gives you the opportunity to look at the whole needs, to look at the future, all those things that I heard in all the various speeches earlier this evening. And you know, this is to put the money where the mouth is and uh, comprehensive planning is something that this community has prided itself on. I hear it quoted constantly the, from the land trust, from uh, citizens throughout and uh, it, 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 Maureen mentioned it's 12 years old 
but by the time the new one is adopted, uh, it'll probably be 15 years old. So I think it's important that we, we begin that process and that we provide the necessary resources uh, because we have, we have a staff member currently on board who, who thinks they can do it maybe for a little less than 12000 but for but realistically, I know that's the cost of printing and everything else. When other communities would just as quickly spend 40000 and it's another example of Cape Elizabeth trying to do things frugally, professionally, and uh, in, in a way that really encourages citizen involvement. And that's mostly what comprehensive planning does is encourage citizen involvement. So I would strongly encourage the... Uh, I strongly <laughs> encourage you to, to uh, authorize this to move forward. Yeah, okay. I made a motion. Thank you. It was uh, seconded. Yes, and uh, Councillor Backer has asked to move the question. So all those in favor of spending $12,000 on the on funding the Comprehensive Planning Committee, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Opposed. Okay. Carol, you and I have never agreed. One, so. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's the end of item number 91, unless anybody has any other crazy motions to make, which I really hope they don't. Is there any money left that we haven't spent? I, oh, yeah. That's my question. $19,000. There's $19,000? Oh, I think Is we there? need to call the school board. 9000 for Family Sunday and then 10000 saved by the... Uh, oh, that's right. Reclaim <laughs> So if any councillors that voted against family funding would like to reconsider, no. we, we can no, reconsider I'm just that. Surprised that we haven't spent all the money before us tonight. Oh yeah. Well, I'm sure some people would have wanted more to go to some other significant large charitable organizations. But um, anyways, that's nineteen thousand dollars we didn't spend, so it's just there. We don't have to do anything with it right now. Um, that. Finishes up item number 91. Uh, we are scheduled to go into executive session, but before that, we're supposed to have citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anybody who would like to speak on any item not on the agenda? Okay. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion. I think it's rather late for us to be doing executive session. In order to, as I said earlier, in order to take a new item up on the agenda after 11 o'clock, it would take a two-thirds vote of the council. Does anyone want to move for us to go into executive session? I make a motion that we postpone executive session for another more appropriate time. To table item number 96. To table item number 96. Who else wants to opine? It's not that? debatable. Second. Okay. Not debatable. All those in favor. Of, but it, to a time, was it to a time indefinite? Um, indefinite means we'll, we'll, we'll what did you say, what did you say to a, 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 a later a, time? I to a later say, time. Yeah, to another time. <laughs> like ten minutes later. Is like, that specific uh, enough? I withdraw my I withdraw my second. Okay, it's been moved but not yet seconded because remember, once it's seconded, we can't have any discussion. It would be my recommendation that there be a motion to adjourn. And what, what that would do is simply leave that there to be considered as the next order of business, and then you, uh, you, you deal with it that way. We'll put it on the next agenda. I want to withdraw that. I withdraw my motion. That's what my intention is. Okay. So motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Sec it's been set, moved and seconded. All in favor of adjourning? 6-0. Thank you. Well, a unanimous vote. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>